what kind of elephant? Oh, it's a Namiki elephant. Oh, a Namiki elephant. Did you ever watch um, How I Met Your Mother at mm-hmm. all? Okay. Does it have anything to do with an elephant? There's I thought no, you were going to say something about Babar. No, I, I, something from that show came to mind with the fossils in the sky, but it won't make any sense hmm. unless you've seen the show. Okay, well... I'll have to go watch it for that reason, though. So I, can... I, I would need to like take like five minutes to explain the layers of that jokes that set it up nicely. It's a funny show, though. I've heard, I've heard things. Yeah, I've it's good. good it's I've one heard... of those shows that they they have a lot of callbacks throughout the whole series. Hmm. So like, it's one of those. It's the rewatch factor is very high. I did not. We did not talk to each other about the Community movie. No. That's a thing. That's a thing. That's happening. Like it's actually happening. Yes. You mentioned it to no, me. No, like it's a thing. Oh, we should totally mention that. I mean, I mean, I don't know how to organically work it in. Oh, no, they don't care. Oh, okay. But I wanted to tell you because. Well, I'm very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, you're the reason I even. Six seasons in a movie, right? right? That's what they tell They it. did it. They're making it happen. Yeah. Still unsure about Donald Glover. Do you Lover. think it's going to be good, though? Like, do I don't think... even care. I don't even care. You're going to watch it anyway? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You kidding me? All right. At this point. There's certain shows like that that if they make sure a about... movie of it, like, I would watch it no matter what. Yeah. I, like that. Uh, Donald Glover's an unknown. Yvette Nicole Brown is an unknown, but everybody, oh, everybody else is coming back. Donald Glover, man. He's I know. gotta do it. They're, um, he's gotta do it. I know. But uh, oh, he's my favorite of that whole series. He's, he's the best. He is kind of. Um, okay, cool. Should we do a pen cast? I mean, I've got no, nothing else planned for the next two hours. Okay, let's do it then. Why not? All right, welcome to episode 660 of the Goulet Pen Casts. 660. Yeah, that's what you wrote. Did I write right that? Yeah. Oh, we time travel. I'm just kidding. We're still doing it. It's episode number 66 of the Goulet Pen Cast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I am Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. And we are here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about pilot pen colors and why they don't bring all them to the U.S., why no one wants yellow pens. Uh, we're going to talk about cartridge converter pens and the lingo around all that. We're going to talk about solving nib creep with a question mark and what one brand we'd pick up if we could just snap our fingers and make it happen and a bunch more questions, actually. We have a lot. Uh, and we're going to be showing off a $14,500 Namiki Machie pen. We're going to unbox it for you. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty rad. I've never seen it in person. And we're going to unbox it and Drew's going to film my reaction. And we'll have plenty of other nonsense to go along with it. So let's go ahead and start it off with some feedback. All right. This feedback from our friend, the Torpedo Monkey. Uh, Which I love. Yes. He's, he's, I he's, love. Uh, he is actually um, was once stationed in a submarine so it's a pretty, so it's like a very fitting yes. name yep so this is this is actually even more fitting because um my son plays balloons i don't know if you know that game i've heard of it monkeys Darts. pop balloons yeah. yeah they throw a dozen pop balloons and uh he got me into it and him and i both played it's like one of our little weird things that we talk about he'll like watch youtube videos oh, because and a be monkey. like okay sorry yeah, I'm a like, monkey what is that yeah, torpedo monkey well there's gotcha. like monkeys that use like shoot missiles and yeah all kinds of things so yeah, i think like anything you throw is a any projectile is a missile that is true. So monkey, they, those are yeah. muscle, monkeys and missiles. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All anyway, right. So yeah, we literally like on the way driving Joseph to school, uh, we were listening to the soundtrack from the balloons game. So very timely for me thinking about wow. monkeys and projectiles. That's next level. Anyway. So this one, <laughs> I didn't actually write the feedback in here because it wasn't written. It's, this is a physical bit of feedback that came to us in the mail. A physical feedback it is and i'm what gonna does that mean? I'm, I'm going to i'm going to gift you something right now brian oh that's right now is it food related because i'm kind of hungry uh i just had lunch and i'm feeling kind of snacky it could be uh, it oh, could be oh, okay what does that mean uh that means well i don't know <laughs> is it is it edible no like, no so i have a do, do, i'm not trying like? to make it on some tlc show or anything here for eating some weird thing that's not meant to be eaten oh what is this <laughs> read that Wow, Drew Lay Pen Company, nib and feed cleaning brush. Wow. That's the oversized model. He also oh made my gosh. a sport model. Wow. <laughs> it's like bamboo? Yes. Look at this. How renewable. It's happening. Oh, wow. The nib feed brush exists. Nib and feed brush. I have willed it into that? existence. 
Wow. This cannot be used for teeth. It will not be effective for teeth. It's only for what? nibs and feeds. Oh, because it's called the <laughs> yes. nib and feed brush. Yes. I see. Just like those carabiners are like wow. for your keys are not for climbing. Can't do it. Right. Well, that is actually true. Well, you should not use I've a actually, carabiner for climbing I've actually, if it's not intended. I've actually that. had a climbing carabiner that said on it for climbing purposes only. Oh, so it goes both ways. That's true. If no keychain for that. If you are using, so I know this because I like do logging work and stuff like that. You're not supposed to use it for like any, um, what is it like life uh, dependent gear, like any any type of gear that you would use like ropes and mm -hmm. you know the carabiners and all that that you use for like life support purposes you're not supposed to use it for other purposes basically because you could like compromise wear it. them or compromise yeah. them in some way that they're using by not their actual really, intention okay thank you that actually so it's not that it technically couldn't be used right but if you did that you wouldn't then want to go back and use it for life mm -hmm. support because you may have like you know altered it or caused more stress than was intended but how um, about this this is pretty right? cool i I think this is pretty rad. You can keep that next time you need to clean your feed. I think I will. You think about the Droulet Pen Company. I will. In fact, the old toothbrush that I've been using to clean my pens, I recently used to clean the grease out of the threads on my tra trailer's tongue jack, which I'll talk about in the <laughs> in the uh, oh good in the what's happening section. Um, and that grease like is not coming out of that toothbrush. No. I, I didn't anticipate just how nasty oh, it would stick to that toothbrush. Gracious. So it's now it's now a grease cleaning toothbrush, not Super. a pen cleaning toothbrush. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. So there you have it. Wow. Thank you, Torpedo Monkey. I appreciate that. The Droulet Pen Company. You know, now. I, just, I just ate some like, I had some macadamia nuts in my yogurt. I love to put like crunchy things in my yogurt. That's been like so a That's why thing. I said it was kind of food related. But yeah, these, like these, I could totally brush my teeth right now. Yeah, but, but then you couldn't use that. it for feeds, just like your carabiner. Well, I don't know. All right. So our next you bit of You wouldn't want to go back and forth, put it that way. <laughs> no. You could use a you can use a toothbrush that you've used on your teeth and then just turn it into a pen cleaning sure. toothbrush. Sure. And just not go back to using it with your teeth. Probably was. Same thing with the grease. You don't want to use the grease toothbrush on your teeth once you've once you've crossed that that uh, the more you know. Yeah. Anyway. You were about to do that, I'm sure. One yeah. of you. Yeah. All right, next bit of feedback is from Amber. And Amber says, yes, I agree with Drew about those darn pilot clip balls. You know, the oblong mass on there? Okay. Ball of okay. lumpy, dumpy death. Whoa. Amber knows. Amber gets although me. I, although I disagree with that, the way that you phrase that, Amber, is really <laughs> funny. Lumpy, dumpy and I like, death. And I like that a lot. I love their pens, but I hate their balls. Oh. Vicky also says, amen, I want the stone blue custom 74, but the clip just kills me. Literally stopping sales. Look wow. at that. Well, you know, you could say that about any clip. No one's going to universally love any, if you, you see, know, see this? If, if you're listening to me, I'm <laughs> eye rolling so hard right oh, now. Oh, come on, come on. I'm just using a different verbal explanation of, you know, it depends. Mm, I know. That's <laughs> hence the eye roll. Okay. Well, anyway, more to come on this there, episode. There for was sure. there were there were more people agreeing with me too. That's just too oh, right. I see what you're doing. You're lumpy, load, you're loading death. up the feedback to support your stance. I see I, how this is working. I uh I, I also could have included the person who says let's have a compilation of Brian's deep dive, but I omitted that because that just, would be a long compilation. I also just said it so I completely negated Yeah, I know, but who would oh my gosh, crazy people out there. Hey. Um, and then uh, no, no. we got another very thoughtful people. Anyway, got a response from Thu, and uh, Thu says, "At this point, I'd mm. love to know how much, if at all, you take into consideration of the pre-roll, pre-intro footage for YouTube when you're getting ready to roll. It's such a fun addition to an already awesome content of the pencast, which is why I stick to the YouTube version." Brian, how much do we prepare the? Oh, literally nothing. Absolutely, I mean, God, nothing. You're watching me and Drew's raw interaction there. <laughs> Never. And then usually I don't even realize Drew started <laughs> filming. And so we've been sitting there for a couple of minutes. I'm like, wait a minute, are we like, he's like sitting there kind of like poised, ready to go. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, oh, we're not, like filming. Not at all. Oh my goodness. They're right, not, fair enough. not one ounce. Well, there you go. You're getting a raw. Yeah, un, un, 100%. Not that the rest of this is all that prepared, no. but we do at least have bullet points. Yeah. Um, and then Dave says, oh, good morning, guys. This obviously came Friday a.m. when I published the pencast. Mm -hmm. Coffee and Goulet pencast is a perfect way to start off the weekend. Mm, Once yeah. again, thanks for making things just a little bit better. 
Have a great weekend and wonderful next week. P.S. Just an idea, but perhaps a new segment of the Pencast could be Woodworking with Drew. Oh, wow. Yes. I laughed so hard at <laughs> Drew telling about cutting a piece of wood. Thanks, Drew. It was fun to laugh again. And enjoy seeing your pack of corgis now. Oh, grow. Pack of corgis grow. Thank you. Now, How you, about that? Woodworking with Drew. <gasps> I feel like you'd, you'd be, like, you'd be I, like Tim Tim Taylor, I, you know, from I, I, Tool Time. You'd be like using tools and like f- fumbling. I would die. Through it. I would kill myself within like five <laughs> minutes. I'd be like, all right, here's how you Yeah, and I a, can be, and I can be Al. Here's how you use a bench lathe. I don't know what a bench lathe is, by the way. I've heard you say it. A bench lathe? Mm-hmm. It's just a small lathe that's made to sit on top of a bench. With like two twirly ends? Yeah, the lathe. Yeah, that's okay. what a lathe is. A lathe spins and you turn things. Yeah. So you know more than you think you do. I'm gonna, it's in there. I'll, I've peppered you enough with this where some I'm of it's gonna, stuck. One day, one day I'm going to build you something out of wood. Oh, and it'll look so bad, but you'll feel so guilty. Just don't just, hurt yourself. Just like, it'd be like a third grader giving you like a garbage pile of clay as a bowl that you have to use because you feel bad because they tried hard. Yeah, I don't Except, know that I would have that feeling for you. <laughs> you would hand me your thing and I'd be like, Drew, what is this garbage? <laughs> Get this out of my sight. No, I'm, just, oh, I'm not man. that mean. You'd have to no. sit on your desk and see it every day and be like, oh, my God. Yeah. What happened? Well, that's fine. <laughs> Just put it next to some of the other <laughs> stuff I have on there. I have so much on my desk. It's uh, fine. I wouldn't really see that much. Um, okay. Well, I got some feedback, too. This is from Summer Pearls. Brian, all caps. You mentioned the running time of the Matrix as two hours and 16 minutes, almost like a pen cast. And whoa, check the length of this pen cast, meaning the last pen cast we did. Spooky cool, it ended up being two hours and 16 minutes. Well, obviously, it's because we're living in the matrix mm. and none of this is real. So it was easy for me to know that because uh, I'm plugged into the matrix, you know? I took the blue pill because obviously it's blue. So, so you know that's the one I'm gonna choose. Oh, okay. So yeah, I don't wanna live in, I don't wanna live in the real world. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Think about it. Yeah. If you had the choice to live in the matrix and like think everything is awesome, or live outside the matrix and like eat that gruel and like have just be chased by robots all the time and like that sucks. Yeah. I don't know. Also, I would die. Like <laughs> you would, most you would, most most people died. How helpful would you be in like a post apocalyptic? I would type try scenario? my hardest, but I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not the main character. I'm not Neo. Well, no, you might be surprised. I'd, I'd Neo wasn't that great, you know? Yeah, like no. he was the one, but he wasn't like I'd be like some computer nerd that wasn't actually helpful just dorky and would just I'd, I'd, I'd bite it pretty quickly within the first 30 minutes fair enough fair yeah. enough I know, know thyself I don't know what I would be but whatever anyway cool summer pearls that's awesome yeah that was kind of neat how it worked out like that um, alright then the laughed wifey says thank you Goulet team for another great pen cast y'all kept me entertained all through the pandemic when I first got started with fountain pens in early 2020 alright and now you guys have just become my favorite thing to watch or listen on YouTube. Keep up the great work right on. With some emojis sprinkled in there. Oh, you're taking off the denim, huh? I didn't mean to actually wear it in here. Oh, well, it looked good on you. No. Yeah. You can pull off a denim look. Yeah. We also haven't mentioned your beard. That's like been, it's, it's like unignorable now. Yeah. I'm, the first, the first pen guys a couple of weeks ago, I was like, did you just like not shave? Because you're very regular about your shaving regimen. Twice, twice a week. Yeah. You actually like work it around the Wednesdays pen cast, and Saturdays. I used to when we did it on Wednesdays, oh, okay. but I still do that. So it's Wednesdays and Saturdays. Oh, so it's actually not related to the pen cast. It at used all. to be. That's where that's where the Wednesday Wednesday started from. But then I'm like, oh, no, okay. I'm not. I'm not moving it for the pen cast. That's too much. Okay, so I got used to that's it. That's what prompted it to start, and then you're mm-hmm. like, no, it's actually yeah. it doesn't matter. No. Okay, fair enough. But no, I'm doing it for Halloween. I'm going to be Doctor Strange for Halloween. Nice. So I'll, I'll just keep like the middle part, but I didn't want to just grow that out because I don't really like the way that looks. Okay. I mean, I don't like the way this looks I mean, either. Some folks can pull that off, but I've no, never I don't, seen you with just that. No, it'll just be for Halloween. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but I, I might darken it. We'll see. Oh, yeah, you should. Probably. When I was in show choir back in high school, we would use mascara. So you would grow out what facial hair you could mm-hmm. as a high schooler, and then you'd color it in with mascara, and it made it look thicker and richer and darker. And, you know, if you get some of, like, the mascara on your skin, it looks, like, kind of brush looky, yeah. so it, yeah. like, blends in really nicely. Oh, so a little, good idea. little theater hack there, show choir theater hack. Um, then lots of feedback about microphone issues. Awesome. We're working on it. We got some post-production things we're trying. Long story short, it's complicated, but I did uh, do some advanced technology here. I put some really did. bubble wrap underneath my mic. So we won't get all into it, but I have some other things we can try. But speaking of mic stands, Drew, yours is a little bit shorter. Look at this. I, I made Drew a little shorty. Someone chopped a little it in shorty half mic stand. and yep. welded it. So. Yep. 
great use of my time, I'm sure. I'm like, I could probably buy a mic stand that's shorter, but I don't know. I looked and I couldn't really find it. So I was like, I'll just make these shorter. Anyway, so now you can see more of Drew's face for better or worse, whatever, you know, that means. But all right, that's it for feedback. Let's talk about some new stuff. All right, well, got a couple new things to mention. I'm apparently talking about all the expensive stuff today because we have the Tachiya Miyabi Empress Fossils in the Sky. I don't understand that name, but you know, whatever. It's cool. Space fossils or something, or maybe somebody's throwing them in the air like confetti. Um, but anyway, uh, Sunset Peacock specifically is the one that I'm mentioning. So all the fossils in the sky have a similar design to them, uh, but this one is uh, the most recent color that we've got, and it looks just fossily amazing. It's 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 crazy looking. Uh, so very very cool, Makie, Rushi, all that good stuff uh, with lots of rotten particulate sprinkled throughout intentionally. Not sprinkled. That makes it sound like it was not intentional, but these are very, very intentionally. <laughs> yes, that would be uh, not Salt Bay, but you'd be <laughs> Rodden Bay, <laughs> Abalone Bay, whatever that is. Um, yeah. Abalone. Abalone, uh, hey. Yeah. Is he even relevant anymore? I don't know. Not really. No, not I think so much. Mo- mostly it's just known for selling insanely overpriced, mediocre pieces of food. No, oh, well, he's really made it then. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Moving on, so very cool, cool looking pen, um, beautiful. And uh, it's got that big nib on it too, that big king of pen size nib. So yeah, if you're into really, really beautiful pens, go check that one out. And if uh, even if you're not shopping for it, you should go look at it because it's beautiful. And then believe it or not, that one at $3,000 is the cheaper one of the bunch that I'm talking about today. Um, the Namiki Emperor that they came out with this for this year, the limited edition, uh, is the Elephant. And we actually have it right there, right there in the box. I don't know if you can actually see that in the shot there, but we have it and we're going to unbox it later in this episode. So yeah, that is a $14,500 pen. So we're going to talk about what the heck makes a pen that expensive, and you'll get to see it more close up. So uh, that's what I got, Drew. Yeah, I've got some. How about little, you? I've got some more cost. Okay. Uh, you that's know, cool. different different zones of cost. Okay, on one some of like more attainable. Level yeah, pens. yeah. So cool. st- starting that's on cool. the higher end, we've got the Peniter Arco in violet. So there, mm. this is the fifth. Uh, currently available yeah. Peniter Arco. It's a layered, um, layered resin. Yeah, like a layered mm-hmm. resin that emulates the look of Arco celluloid. Yeah. So that is available now, and it is the first purpley one that we've had. So I think it looks really, really nice. You can check that out. It is uh, available currently. So pretty, pretty, pretty. And then uh, pretty, pretty casual launch here. We just added a few more colors to the Diatramentus Document Ink series. Those are by far the most popular kind of sub series within the Diatramentus Ink line. We have added moss green and purple violet to the document series. So if you are not already familiar with the document ink series, they are super, super permanent and great for ink washes and mm-hmm. artistic purposes when you want to layer down some ink and then layer some more stuff on top of them without disturbing the things beneath them. So there you go. they're popular within the line. And mm-hmm. uh, now there's more variety available to you. Sweet. And then just off the press, this is not available as the two I mentioned earlier are, but coming soon will be Twisby's Eco in another glow in the dark color. Another glow. This time yeah. it's purple. It, it's yeah. purple, and then, but it kind of glows, glows blue. blue. Yeah. yeah, which I think looks awesome. I think it looks awesome too, especially with the green. I think that the purple and green works well. That's a nice spooky vibe, and the blue and green works well. It's a glow in the dark vibe. I think that it is a uh, fun, and that'll be coming out uh, right at the end of the month. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that if that's Sweet. your vibe. Yeah. Do we have that on the site? Can people at least yes. sign up for it? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so we don't have it yet, but it'll be coming. Coming soon. Sweet. All right. Be sure to keep checking our coming soon and new products on our site because we've got a a lot of stuff on the coming soon page. A lot of stuff on the horizon. We haven't we haven't talked about all of it yet, but we will. But check it out. There's a lot of fun, crazy stuff. Good stuff. Speaking of fun, crazy stuff, we have a bunch of questions for Q and A this week. We do. We have ten questions this week. Yeah. So let's get into that. So, no deep dives this week, Drew. We no, got lots no. of shallow little puddle hoppers. Yeah, yeah. I think that we can, uh, we've got a lot of questions that have been given to us over the past couple months, really. I mm-hmm. went back kind of far because some questions were good, solid questions, but didn't mm-hmm. really necessitate a lot of discussion. So, I wanted to give those a bit of a spotlight today. So, okay. what are you doing? 
What do you have there? Just have a little, little snack, a little munchies. Oh, that's candy corn. You can't really, yeah. That's it's candy ups- corn season, you know? Ugh. I went and bought some. My kids wanted some. Ugh. And Rachel was like, maybe we'll get you some if you're good, if you don't get Ugh. any in your Halloween candy and whatnot. Yeah, see that? Oh, man. And you've got that Drew's vintage. Not a fan. You've got that vintage right on mug. How how old is well, that? Well, it's not vintage. This is my sister in law made this for me. Right, but it's old. Oh, it's probably a decade old. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like yeah. that's vintage in terms of the company's history. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's an OG mug. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all right. A great mug for this purpose. So, um, oh goodness, I did not write down who actually. Oh no no sorry okay so two people um, mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. some point were more or less. Wondering why Pilot doesn't come out with new colors. You've got Ink Speckles mm-hmm. on Instagram say, why doesn't Pilot release more decimo colors in the USA? Mm. It's been 5 billion years. And I checked and <laughs> they're they're right. It has been Earth's exactly been five, around 5 billion yeah, years. Yeah, so. Sure, sure. Um, okay. And then WB Kelly 24 says, when is Pilot going to offer more colors for the Custom 823, 912, mm. or Custom Heritage 92? Mm. So really, Brian, the people just want to know, why is Pilot not... Sailor, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Why are they keeping all the good colors yeah. themselves? Uh, well, in short, I don't know. Ah! I don't know. We've asked for it. Mm-hmm. I know they have these colors in Japan because I have access to the internet like you all do. Uh, but they don't bring it into the U.S. It's not that Pilot USA is not like trying to get them. They're literally just like Pilot Japan. Just They would love them because them. that would mean they'd be able yeah. to sell them. Yeah. But We'd love more colors. We basically have we ask if, about if, it. If what we have on our site is everything that they import into the U.S. More or less, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't I don't know if there's anything that we could sell that we don't from Pilot. I don't recall. I don't know that we have every color of the Metal Falcon. Maybe. That might that might be it. But pretty much, it's... We, we carry it's pretty ni- much their whole 95% line. of everything. Yeah, so. more or less. More or less. But yeah, I don't know. I don't want to tell you. Yeah, do you think it's because... Like, I want to say it's not because Pilot has, you know, the fountain pen part of Pilot is mm-hmm. not by any means significant to Pilot's bottom line. For their overall? Yeah. No, it's definitely not. But yeah. but so I I initially thought that. Well, like, like the well, fine the fine writing right. products. I initially yeah. thought that, but then I'm like, no, because they have crazy colors in Japan. Yeah, so they do. that's not it. No, I think they just service that market a little more intentionally than yeah. their global market. I don't think it's anything against the U.S. I don't think they have any of these other colors in Europe or anywhere else either. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just they they keep that special stuff to Japan and they just don't really bring it outside of that. It could be a capacity issue. I don't know if they just, you know, it's it's they don't have the ability to produce it in large enough quantity to export it. I don't know, but it could be. I don't really know. Yep. They don't really tell us. But well, there you have it. But I want to be respectful, though. You know, it's totally up to them. If they want to do it that way, I'm not, like, trying to complain about it. But... You know, they have a great reputation for their pens. And if they wanted to expand the color range outside, you know, especially into the U.S., if they want to expand it outside of Japan, we would just welcome it with open arms. So just like Sailor's seen a lot of growth with the expansion of more colors, I imagine everybody would be ready for a pilot to do the same. So we want to encourage that. But, you know, we'll take over whatever we get. Just keep doing your thing, pilot. You're making great pens. And uh, if you make more colors of them, we'll just love it that much more. Very true. If and when they're ready then for that to happen. All right, probably Stever asks, why are there not more yellow-bodied pens? We need more yellow. I think Stever might need more yellow, but his compatriots within the fountain pen industry or fountain pen community, they don't because they don't buy them, do they? they? No, no, they just don't buy them, Stever. Not so much. Uh, If we were to offer, say, six colors in a brand new fountain pen and Mm -hmm. one of them was yellow, it's more or less guaranteed that that will be the, the worst. worst seller. Um, it's right there with white. White white and yeah. yellow just do not sell well yeah. ever. At um, least for us. I don't know if it's different in other parts of the world. It's possible. It might be the I U.S. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that yellow is necessarily it's like... It's not. I tried to think of some yellow color. pens that have been successful. And yeah. the, I even asked Rachel. And um, the one that we could think of was the Yellow Safari. That's been around... For a very long time, it's probably the most popular one. Yeah, yeah, and then the uh, she she mentioned the yellow eco is also not bad. Um, okay, just because it's an eco, I guess. Yeah, but we we do have some yellow pens. There's a you know we've got yellow sailors, we've got yellow preppies, we've got. Um, but definitely on like the higher end range too, like yellow. No, is never no. popular. No, generally we don't even. 
if we have the option, we just don't even pick up a yellow version. We'll do like, yeah, everything but yellow because it just sits around. Yeah, I don't know. It's just people's preferences, I guess. It's not a very in-demand color. Hmm. So if you want to change, if you want to change our minds, just buy a lot of the next yellow pen that we sell. And then <laughs> the next time we get there a choice, go. we'll say, well, last time the yellow did really good because yeah. probably Steve or bought all of them. Do you think maybe at least in the fountain pen thing, because there's not a lot of maybe yellow inks that you can match it to that are like, because a lot of yellow inks are kind of hit or miss too. Oh, you think it's a matchy matchy thing? Maybe. I don't know. Do you mm. think that's a factor? I don't know. So maybe if we just started carrying buttered popcorn, we'd see some more yellow. <laughs> you are pencil. campaigning so hard for that. <laughs> campaigning so hard. Yes. Or just use like a brown and then you can have like a banana type situation going on, like a brown ink and a yellow pen. I like that. Maybe. Hmm? I don't I know like if that makes that. sense. Like a liquid brown, like coming out. That'd be like a, you know, bananas when they start to like kind of rot and you like yeah, but then squish them and they kind of like they, ooze out that brown like Then they're good for banana stuff. bread. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's gross. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right well, next. the next one is from uh, K R E N G. Krenig. Krenig. Krenig 25. Sure. Um, I'm confused with the term cartridge converter. Is cartridge within the converter? Hmm. So, like within its heart of a converter lies a cartridge. Oh, you think that's what Krenig? No, I don't no. think so. Okay. No. So, so Krenig wrote cartridge converter as like just two words. Mm -hmm. I think typically, I mean, these terms get thrown around a lot. Some people just call them cartridge pens. Some people call them converter pens. Some people call them cartridge converter pens. Yep. But usually cartridge converter is like cartridge and then a slash converter. And or. And or, yeah. Uh, so basically it's both. Not every cartridge pen can take a converter, especially if it's a little shorty pen, may not take a, a full size converter or may take a mini converter or whatever. Um, but basically, you you can't really have a converter without the cartridge aspect because it's called a converter because it's converting the filling mechanism of the pen from cartridge only to able to use it with bottled ink, hence the converter part. So a converter is usually a piston converter, twist, or sometimes a slide, sometimes a button, like the Con 70, my favorite, Drew's favorite. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically, it's it's you're talking about one one pen here that you can have multiple filling options. Um, so that's really all that it means. You're using a converter that will fit onto the body of the pen, just like a, um, or the grip of the pen, I guess, uh, just like a cartridge would, but then you can fill directly from a bottle. Right. No. But but yeah. the cartridge is not within the converter. There are two no, separate two options. Separate cartridge things, is a yeah. pre-filled reservoir mm -hmm. of ink that is generally disposable. Mm -hmm. A converter is a more is, is like a tool essentially that yeah it's like an, a yeah it's a replaceable you know yeah. filling mechanism that you can yeah. put in place of the pre-filled ink cartridge exactly now technically if you don't have a cartridge or sorry if you don't have a converter you can still use bottled ink you just use an ink syringe and refill the cartridge right. so you know but i think yeah you wouldn't consider that like part of the pen yeah probably You're not. essentially just hacking the cartridge style but you know it's more obvious on a pen like the twisby swipe for example which we've talked about a bunch here that comes with cartridges and it comes with actually two different types of converters but it's very obvious with that because you're looking at several different objects that can fit onto the pen it gives you different options there so both of the uh, converters they have on there would be the converter part so cartridge converter the terms are used somewhat interchangeably but it all means pens that essentially take cartridges so there you go. There you go. Okay. Next one we got is from Evie Williams, 28. Ways to solve nib creep. Drew, can you just solve this for no, us? I mean, please? I don't like it when nibs be creeping on me, but hmm. uh, no. Nib creep, uh, if you're not familiar with the term, is when ink kind of uh, leeches or seeps out from the tines onto the face of the nib. So mm -hmm. it's like on top where you're not doing the writing. Sometimes that can happen. Sometimes you might kind of uh, just kind of create a little line in right in between the uh, slit. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't hurt anything. It's just ink up top. You might not like the way it looks, but it's not doing any damage. The reason I understand for that to happen is mm -hmm. when the tines are cut. So it starts with a solid you know, piece of metal nib, and then they have to cut that slit using a mm -hmm. tiny, 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 um, wheel. Mm -hmm. um, when that is cut, sometimes it can leave abrasions, especially as the wheel eventually loses its edge. Mm -hmm. um, if one of those abrasions can 
kind of create a little pathway up to the top of the nib, mm -hmm. ink will always just kind of go. I mean, that's that's what the tines do. Yes. The tines create mm -hmm. a path to kind of like coax the ink yeah. down to the tip of the nib. Like, come on down here. That's why it's angled the way mm -hmm. it is. If you have a tiny, tiny version of that within the tines, it could be the tiniest, tiniest little line, like mm -hmm. less than a hair. Um, ink can, depending on its viscosity, find its way up and just kind of pool yeah. on top there. So generally yeah. that happens more with the wetter inks, um, the ones that flow more freely. Um, yeah. You're probably gonna see that a little bit more, hmm. but it, it's not harmful. It just means that there was a little pathway and it's just a complete aesthetics thing. But uh, yeah. there's really no way I know of to fix it unless you were to find some way to repolish like the polish. inside of your tines, which I, I don't even- technically do that i don't know I guess a reliable if you, if you, way to do that i guess that. if you took a, like a brass sheet that's sort of you're getting something you that's know. not that's not abrasive though i would say that you I mean, have, it is you, abrasive to a degree you'd have to probably floss your tines with like a um an abrasive card of some kind yeah um, so or get some like wet dry sandpaper yeah that's but what, it would need to be really really fine yeah i don't but, know if they make i've i've done that with like sandpaper. with that yeah with like yeah. micro mesh is going to be too thick because it's got that like and kind of rubbery backing too. Yeah. yeah, it's not rigid enough. But I'm sure it can be done. But uh, the the bottom line is you don't really need to fix it. It's not mm. something that uh, it does bother some people though. It does, in my opinion, trying to fix it probably the uh, risks outweigh the reward. In my yeah. opinion, but and what's annoying is like when you try to wipe it off, it doesn't really no. go It'll away. Come back. I mean, if it like builds up a lot, you can wipe it, and there be like less of it, I guess. But it's gonna gonna do it again. Yeah. So my recommendation is like, just try a different ink if it really bothers you that bad, because whatever, just the nature of the ink might do different. And see, it's like, it's not even like one brand or one nib size or anything like that. Cause like Drew mentioned, it basically happens when the wheel is cutting the slit of the nib, which could happen with any nib, any brand, any anything. And it's gonna be wildly inconsistent from one to the other. Cause it's just this completely variable part of the production process. So uh, yeah, it's not like a super, predictable consistent thing nope um so yeah the best thing is just to like get over it <laughs> just pretend it's not like, there not, yeah i mean not like <laughs> get over it but like yeah just don't worry about it yeah it's I mean, not it, sweat it. It, it's not hurting anything it's i will not. say the one thing where it does kind of become a turn off is if you have a pen that like doesn't seal super great and you get some nib creep and you have an ink that tends to like crustate oh, cr crustaceanize the barnacle factor that's where the barnacle can mm. like grow like on the surface of the nib and it's like, yeah, but you just wipe it off and it's fine. Barney so, and all yeah, of his friends. Barney shows up on top of your nib. Might not be the best thing, but again, it's purely aesthetic. You just wipe it away and it's fine. So eh, don't worry yep. about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Here's one that's a bit of a brainer, Brian. Ooh, I like brainers. Mawood14 mm. says, if you could snap your fingers and add one brand mm. to the GPC. That's okay. the Goulet Pen Company. Goulet Pen, okay, I'm glad you clarified, thank um, you. What would that brand be, Brian? Ooh, Snap okay. Your fingers. So I did have a clarifying question about this. Okay. Does this have to be like an existing brand? Like, is there an element of like, practicality we're talking about yeah. or if i could like snap some vintage brand that's not available no, let's anymore. stick with brands that something that like would be technically feasible yeah. to actually happen yeah okay um yeah so i think i can think of a number of like really respected independent pen makers who i think would be cool for us to carry but i know like realistically they probably don't have the capacity we can go with one of them you know so i mean we could yeah maybe we could go with something like that because there's like what a bunch would be of your choice if we did that oh gosh i don't know I didn't really think about that aspect of it as much. Um, I don't know. We can just riff and talk a little bit. I mean, like Canalea pens, we know them really. We've known them for years. Yep. You know, they're great people, but their just capacity never mm -hmm. made sense. Um, we have carried Franklin Kristoff in like a one pen a year kind of a situation. It would be super cool to like carry. It would all be cool to Franklin carry it like Christoph. regularly, oh, yeah, right? But that's awesome. just like not. They actually would have capacity. But they just, just not how they do it. So yeah. that would be pretty cool. And they're like a known quantity as well. Mm -hmm. So they would probably be like more up there on my list. Yeah. But it's like, you know, for qualifying the question, it's like we technically have, have had that brand here. So, you know, yeah. I'd love to have it more. And we have like their pen cases and stuff. So it's like we do have the brand, but it's also like, yeah, we don't we don't really have it all the way. Yeah, you I know. can understand that. Yeah. Um, 
other ones, uh, you know, like Shone Pens and and other ones like that. that Gravitas. Like, Gravitas. Yeah, yeah, ones that like have done the pen show circuit and more like sell direct and done like some batch stuff. That would, those would be cool. That would be very cool. Um, I love supporting the, the smaller pen makers, but it is it is tough to make that leap into like going from making pens yourself to essentially wholesaling them out to another retailer. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, it's as a pen maker – you take a margin hit on that. It completely changes the way you operate your business. It's it's difficult to kind of cross that that Rubicon. So, um, uh, Yo, uh, Yoshi Nakama of eighteen one eleven. Oh yeah, beautiful stuff. One Those of Rachel's fun. favorite pens. It's like a cherry blossom pen. So mm -hmm. like we've we've bought some of his stuff just personally, just to support his craft and all that. He has no desire or means whatsoever to expand enough to even consider doing mm -hmm. a retail thing, but. His pens are gorgeous. So like, and there's a lot of like Yurushi artists and stuff like that that don't necessarily make their own pens, but they do stuff on top of pens. So I can think of like a number like that, but it's like in all practicality, probably wouldn't actually work out. So, you know, I thought it was worth mentioning all those just because like that would be neat if, yeah. I'm, if I'm kind of dreaming. Yeah. Um, but more realistically of like a major brand that would have capacity. I guess Franklin Christophe would probably fall into that category, but um, Mont Blanc is the one we get asked about the most. Yeah. That's like the most obvious one that we don't carry. Yeah, by snapping um, our fingers, we would be changing just, their entire like prerequisite system. Yeah, but I mean, like, that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of how it is for all that's, of these that we're talking about. Yeah, like but, we're going to have to change some element of reality to mm -hmm. any of these brands that I've mentioned. Yep. Um, but Mont Blanc, assuming that we could get the stock of the pens that we want, not have to deal with the other parameters around things that they tend to want to put in place. Like we've had conversations with Mont Blanc and they just, they want us to have a physical store and we're like, no, not just for you. Especially. We could put a cardboard like, box in the uh, loading dock. No, you have to have like a marble floor oh. and like a specific way that it's, and yeah, they make you stock their leather and a bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, we don't want to do any of that. Like we are really good at what we do and we want to do it that way. And they're like, yeah, well, if you change your mind, let me know. And I was like, well, if you change your line, mind, <laughs> let me know. No, you let me know. And uh, that's pretty much where we left off. So nothing against them, but it's just like, yeah, we like don't want to carry all their like cufflinks, bags and cufflinks and I, belts and watches. Like, I don't, we don't care have about any, any way of that to, stuff. No, we don't have any way to market that. Yeah, what but it's like, do? that's where they make more of their money. I don't think they really do a lot. Of no, their I can't. Necessarily. So, yeah. you know, but hey, if they've ever, you know, if I could snap my fingers, you know, Mont Blanc by far has the most brand recognition. Right. Like whenever I tell, you know, people outside yes. of the pen world. Same. And I'm like, oh yeah, I sell pens. And they're like, oh, like Mont Blanc. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mont Blanc. <laughs> yeah. That, that happens and then if all you're the time like, to me. No one ever follows that up with, oh, I really love the model, blah, 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 blah. Like right. actually knowing anything about No, Mont they're Blanc. like, oh, yeah, my dad has a Mont Blanc. They they're just like, know that as oh, like. Yeah, I have a Mont Blanc at home like, somewhere. Expensive gift pens. Yeah. yeah so they're like, like, so you sell gift pens, like personalized gift pens. And I'm like, nope, literally none of that. Nah. Not that brand you mentioned or any of that stuff. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. I'll just, we'll just nod and then we'll move this conversation on because it's too much to explain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you mentioned th there was a, a question a couple episodes ago where we were hypothesizing if we could kind of supercharge a brand yeah. with, with the assets of a big brand like Lamy or Pilot. Yeah. And you mentioned giving those assets to uh, Conid. Um, oh, that yeah. would be another good one. If we could just snap our fingers and have them ramped up full production and oh, be carrying I didn't those. even think about COVID. Co yeah. co COVID. Oh, you thought of COVID plenty. Co we all have. Nid. But Are they still making pens? Because they stopped. They, like, they stopped, but altogether. I think they said they were going to start up again soon. Because they're not, I, I mean, they're not really a pen. They're like an aeronautical company. I don't and know And it's like some of, the, some of the engineers like liked pens and started making these mm. pens on the side. But they had like a multi-year backlog and then they like stopped taking orders all together with COVID and all that kind of stuff. So I don't even know what they're doing anymore, but yeah. they made some cool freaking yeah. pens. Conan so would be cool. That would be another one that like, that that is probably a little more removed from reality in yeah. terms of making that happen, but that they would be on my list as well. Yeah. So yeah, for dreaming, why not? Throw why them not? on there. No, that, that would be my, that was what uh, popped into my head. Cool, good thought. All right. Oh, look um, at this. Oh, you're gonna hit me another one. Back to back questions oh, here. Oh yeah, I just did, I just copied like one through five and one through five, so it just oh, started okay. it over again. So All right, anyway. cool. All right, uh, Suna1492 asks, mm. what's the difference between a special edition and a limited edition? Uh, well, get out your bingo cards because it depends. No, um, he's 100%. I, I completely yeah. agree with that. They're, they're not regulated terms. No. You know, so it really can actually vary from one company to another. And often does. What it, what it means. We try to use them in somewhat of a standard way. And we try to 
if it's not like an official thing in the name of the pen, we try to have it like in the description or have it somewhere to like give some context as to what they actually mean by these things. But in general, special editions, the special tends to mean like a new color or design, maybe of an existing model. You know, it's usually just like a, a variation of something oftentimes. Uh, and and more specifically, it's it's something that's only often available for a, a short time. Like a seasonal edition like or it could an be annual seasonal, edition. It could be time-based or yeah. it could be like a single production run, you know? So it's like they make it, they might, they might, you know, make it one batch at a time and then they'll kind of stop when the demand runs out or, you know, so it's, I don't know. It, it depends like Lamy, they usually have their special editions around for a year, but then, you know, if there's still stock out there, it might be a little longer than a year. If they sell it really quickly, it might be less. It kind of depends, right? But they may make, a, a, you know, not a defined number. We don't necessarily know how many they're making, but it's for usually for some, some discrete, you know, shortened period of time. Uh, and they're again, usually not numbered. They could be, but they're often not. Um, and they could be brought back later as a special edition or maybe added to a regular line thinking Lamy, they've done that a number of times with different, um, uh, Safari and all-star pens where they've had something that's come out as a special edition. And then like four or five years later, they bring it back. Same it's color. Terra same and everything. Savannah. Yeah, exactly. So they may, they may do that. Um, so that has happened. Um, limited edition generally means something that's numbered. It's, it's a little more exclusive. That's what we try to define it as anyway. We try to, yeah, we try to. So we'll even urge a manufacturer or a distributor to like call it, if we get any say in the matter, we'll urge it to be like, you know, if it's gonna be something you're calling limited, it probably should be numbered or call it something else, you know? So that's usually the cutoff and numbered. It could just be a running number, but it could be, Oftentimes it's out of a certain number. So if they make 300 pens, it'll be number one out of 300, two out of 300, et cetera. And those ones are often, you know, a special, it could be a special or color or a material of an existing, you know, model. But if that's the case and it's limited, then they're, they're not gonna bring it back. That, that's it, they're gonna make it out of that. They're gonna make however many they make and then it's gone forever. They're not gonna then bring it back as a regular pen or as a special edition or anything like that. So limited usually means this is it. This is the only chance you're gonna get. Um, and that tends to be a rule that I think pretty much every brand has stuck to, even though it's not like, you know, there's no police, limited edition police out there. I think it's well known enough in the community that if you call something limited, you better not bring it back. Right. Because it's gotta be super special. And everybody will be mad who bought one. They thought it was, you know, yeah. that yeah. was the only ones that would be available. Um, but more often we see in limited editions, new designs. So it could be something that's slightly tweaked or it could be literally just a whole new design, which those are the ones that tend to get more expensive. Because obviously it's like, if you're going through all the R and D and the manufacturing process to design a whole new pen, it's probably gonna be a lot more expensive. So you're gonna see much more specific and probably like heavy intentional theming around some of these, especially like the new designs, mm -hmm. you know, thinking like the Viscontis and the Montegrappas and those types of things, you're getting into the multiple thousands or you get into the Namiki pens that are the limited editions. You're gonna see, you know, numbered pieces like the elephant pen that we'll show yeah. you here today. Those are gonna be out of one out of 99. It's one artist that's doing it and it's that, it's that design and it's very heavily themed and then that's all they're gonna, we're gonna have um, and they're not gonna bring it back. So yeah, that's, that's, that's generally what differentiates the two, but there is some overlap. Sailor distinguishes theirs a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, so we try to specify when it does deviate from, from these general rules, but that's, it's pretty safe, pretty safe to yeah. go on with those. Yeah. All right, Captain Quark, which is fun. Uh, can I, can that giant Lamy Safari in the office be uncapped? Well, Captain, technically it is a Lamy LX. Yes. And uh, we're actually going to go and try. Oh. So. Um, Are we going to do that now? Not right now. Okay. But. We'll do it later. We will. But we'll insert it here. Exactly. So we're going to time jump. Yes. Enjoy. All right, Brian, does that, uh, does that cap come off? Well, let's see. Oh my God. Um, yes. It does. Technically. There's no nib. No. What? Oh. <laughs> they did not make a full size pen for this display. No, it's meant to be like a uh, store display. But it, but it does come off. The cap is removable. Technically, if you want to say that the cap is removable, then 
What else would you call what you're holding in your hand? I mean, it's not really a cap. It is a cap! It's That's the cap to the pen! plastic made to look like a cap. Dude. It's not actually capping anything. Oh my god. It's a cap. It's the cap of... Depending on how technical you want to be... How in the world can you do it? It depends on that. You're literally holding the cap. That, I will say that. Absolutely. All right. There we go. Good job. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. Um, next question comes to us from Dancer of Peace. Ooh, what? How pleasant. Is Brian's favorite kind of wood to work with? Oh. Everybody wants me to make choices today. I don't know about this. Um, it is tough. My short answer to give a real answer is probably walnut. If I had to go, just walnut. That was Great surprisingly fast. Yeah, but I got more. Oh. <laughs> so walnut, it, wor it, it works really well. So it's very pleasant to work with. It's very interesting. I like wood with a lot of character. And it's dark, but it's not too dark. It's got some lighter elements to it. So it's a very, it's a very interesting wood. Mm. It's not just like plain, boring looking. There's a lot of variation that can happen uh, with that wood. And it's it's really good in terms of its strength and it doesn't like move too much or whatever. So you wouldn't wanna use it for outdoor furniture necessarily, but if you're using it for furniture or if you wanna make bowls out of it or use it for turnings or ornamental stuff, mm. it's very versatile wood. Like some woods tend to you know be very splintery, so they're not great for turning or other ones are like really heavy, so they're not, you know, they're good for some types of furniture, but not others. You know, so you have to take all these things into account when you're working with wood. Um, but uh, yeah, walnut all around is just a really, really great wood. Um, and it's also pretty available, especially around here. So it's not crazy expensive. It's considered a little more of a, I don't know, premium domestic wood. So it's like, it's nicer and more interesting than you would get with just like pine, you know, yellow pine or something like that. Um, it looks like a nice wood, but it's not so expensive that you like feel like you can't makes like a whole piece of furniture out of it. Um, and actually I just am actively making a piece of furniture out of it right now. Is that the headboard? My, yeah, my nephew's ah, nice. headboard, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, if we're going more on the like extreme and expensive end, I love Bubinga. It's a beautiful wood. It's a little more of an exotic. It does not grow in the US, um, but it looks amazing. So I'll try to share some pictures. I haven't worked with it a whole lot, but I'll find some picture that we can grab and throw in here. Nice. Um, but I love wood with defects, lots of character and variation. I don't like plain, straight, flat wood. I like wood that just looks really weird and interesting and very unique because as a woodworker, I find that to be an element of when I'm like, you know, basically picking the pieces to make. If I'm like, like for, for example, my nephew's headboard, it was like, oh, if I can book match you know, these pieces, which means like I can take a wood, a piece of wood, like a board, slice it down the middle and then open it up. So the grain pattern is like mirrored mm -hmm. on a single piece. And then I can like orient it so that it looks, you know, this way so that it matches the side. Yeah. And you, you couldn't know. do that with a wood that had no character. You can't do it. Yeah. And no, you can't do that. You can't really get that with like commercially made furniture either. So it's like, to me, as a craftsman. It's like a signature. Yeah, it's like a signature. It's like, yeah, exactly. So it's like, that is part of the element of what I enjoy. Someone did this a on custom purpose. custom piece. Yeah, yeah there, exactly. There was some human decision-making going exactly. on here. And when you have wood with a lot of character, it just gives you more interesting things that you can like feature, aspects of the wood. Or if I, yeah. get, if I get wood that has like, knots in it or has holes through it like even like bug holes and like weird stuff that you think is kind of gross but you can like fill those with different colored resins you can make it like a more artistic thing yeah i was about to say it, it so adds an element that. of artistry absolutely like a different type of artistry woodworking obviously is an art but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more of like a mathematical science art with joining and stuff like that or geometric right, art right, right whereas the what you're talking about is more or less working with, more expressive yeah, expressive, yeah exactly. exactly so i love like the n working with natural elements because i think you know that's part of the benefit of woodworking as opposed to like making something out of metal or if you're just going to make something out of wood and then paint it you don't get any of those elements so like having like raw natural wood just gives you some really interesting stuff to feature and work with so um Walnut gives you a lot of that. All right, walnut. Yeah, and then uh, cherry also is a really nice wood to work in. That is a little more kind of straight grained, more plain. It's great for things like cabinets. I feel like everybody necessarily... likes cherry. Cherry is just a very popular, very yeah. pleasant wood, and it, like gets this like nice reddish brown tone. Mm -hmm. It like really riches, richens, richens. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Rich, richinates. Richens? Richinates. It, 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 it enriches <laughs> in color with exposure to the sun, so it like becomes redder and, and like 
more beautiful uh, with sun exposure. Ah, so that is kind of interesting too. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I've well, only had indoor cherry things. Yeah. There's some, there's some All woods. All of those are probably fake cherry too, yeah, so it, I don't know. It has to do with like the, the lignans and like the elements of the wood. Some woods will like bleach out and become lighter and lose their color mm. with sun exposure. Other ones will darken up and look richer and, and even better with sun exposure. It all just depends. So these are all other elements you get to, to kind of pick. So it really depends on like how this thing's going to be used. Um, and then turning, because I'm a wood turner as well, um, I like even different types of wood. Wood turning is really like very different than like furniture making, for example. So I like the crazier, wilder stuff that you could, it's, it's usually more expensive stuff and harder to find. Um, but the really unstable, crazy characteristics of wood, like they have these things called burls that are essentially like tumors that grow on the tree. Um, so like, you know, you get this like interwoven like interlocking All grain swirly, pattern, yeah. swirly and it's a huge pain to work with but it looks unbelievable um it's very expensive usually to get that type of wood because it's very rare and they can't really replicate it either so you can't just like harvest it to try to get this burly wood you basically have to find it in nature yeah so it's kind of rare and hard to find even in the day when we can pretty much find whatever we want anywhere have you ever like been out in the woods and seen a mm -hmm. burl and just be like, well, I'm taking that burl. Yeah. yeah. I have like trees on my property where I'm like, Ooh, you know, I can like see, cause sometimes you can see, sometimes you can't, it depends on the tree, but you can very clearly see a burl cause it looks like this big, like lump yeah, yeah. coming out of the tree. But sometimes you can see there's trees, like especially certain like maple trees and stuff like that, where it's like, there's like ripples in the tree. It almost looks like there's like, that's like corrugated almost like it looks really strange like that that you get more of like a quilting kind of a pattern hmm. that happens if you were to slice that up but Binga has a lot of that that quilted look which looks amazing what is so cool just looks amazing there's over fifty thousand wood species in the world by the way fifty thousand it's a lot it's amazing so many um anyway but amboina burl has got to be i think my favorite wood and that's yeah. we we actually have a room in our our uh, yeah. building here named after Amboina. So Amboina burl, favorite wood, walnut, favorite yeah. wood to work with. Yeah, Amboina cool. burl is, I, I love to see it, but it yes. is a huge, it's super expensive and it's very hard to work with, mm. but it looks amazing. So yeah, walnut would be my overall pick though. But anyway, thanks for letting me talk about wood because I love woodworking. But anyway, thanks for humoring me. Okay, uh, moving on. Gwen Elliott asks, do y'all film these during a normal workday? Thanks for all you do, Hart. What do you think, Drew? Yes, we do. What we do a, indeed. What is a normal workday for oh, us? God. I mean, we don't stay like, after work to do this, uh, no, for sure. No. I, I, will, I will say that uh, the company is no. very, very good about making sure that everyone in the, the company has a solid work-life balance. Everything ends mm -hmm. at five. No one is asked to do anything off hours um, without getting paid for it ever. So. Uh, it's really healthy there. So yeah, we do. Uh, standard work day. Try to respect um, that. Usually Tuesday afternoons, like today, sometimes Wednesdays. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Tuesdays have been what we've been doing most recently. For m about half the episodes have probably been done on Wednesdays, but yeah. more recently it's been Tuesdays. But yeah, it's it's about uh, 3 o'clock here. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah, here we are. And we're doing this. It's not super easy, especially for Brian. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but... Um, People who own their own companies tend to be busy. It's easier for me uh, to block off time, but uh, I, I, you know, you, you've told me before that this is kind of like a a time for you to kind of chill for a little bit. So yeah, I enjoy I, this. Yeah, it's. Good. I mean, yeah. Prior to this, I was reviewing cyber liability insurance application paperwork, and uh, let's see here, I was reviewing Google Ad like. Um, you know, basically like the difference between the attribution between like our Google Analytics and Google Ads. And those are different and trying to understand why so that we can make smarter <sighs> decisions when buying ads. And, you know, it's like these are these are complicated things that are after, not after important, but not nearly as much fun after 10 as this. After a decade of owning a business, he and Rachel are now doing only the not fun things. Like Mostly. It, it started off like they were doing a little bit of everything. And then as they've trained more people and kind of honed in, it's like now everything I hear them doing is just like, wow, that sounds miserable. It's fun. <laughs> it sounds it's, awful. It's fun in a different way, <laughs> I guess. You know, oh, my God. It's like all the all the easier, more reproducible 
challenges. Yeah. Our, our team can help it's, us out with a lot. We get all the the stuff that only the, weird the owners stuff, can the stuff do. That's super unclear. Yeah. Wildly Ugh. like speculative and very uncertain and needs to be sought out and come up with creative answers. These are the things that we get to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least there's the pen cast. Exactly. There's always this is the like pen my, cast. This is like my fun place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so like we and, enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, this is taking me back to my roots here. This is how we all start down. Yes. I didn't start this business because I love filling out insurance paperwork. I can tell you that much. <laughs> but it's important. It's got to be done. Oh, here's the most important one. Oh, yeah? Final question of the day. Oh. Banana is a Hannah, our old friend, <laughs> asking. That is a, quite a name. <laughs> That's so many N's and A's. <laughs> it is. Wow. Um, and then... Uh, Golly, I'm just looking. I'm like, is this a palindrome? No, okay. No, um, what is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, mine is not candy corn, even though that's what I'm snacking on Even though you're right scarfing now. it. Well, yeah, my kids wanted it, and so I bought it, and then I was like, I can't give them that because Rachel was like, <laughs> you know, trying not to commit to them having it. But I bought it anyway because we've been talking about it here at work. And uh, so I bought it, and it's, now I'm snacking on it. It's so terrible. It's not a great story, but no. it's what's happening. Um, chocolate for me. Give me all the chocolate. Yeah. I don't want you are a chocolate nerds. Fan. I don't want any of this. Whoops. Just drop my candy corn. Mm. Uh, I don't want, yeah, uh, like when you're a kid and you want to like trade candy or whatever, yeah. somebody else had like wanted to trade me like, like hard candy, trade me their like Reese's cup mm. and they they wanted my starburst or whatever. I'm like, yes, yeah, sucker. Like <laughs> I'll gladly trade that. Like you want me to trade like. Those Five of those for one Reese's Cup? Those like, Star I'll take that. St uh, Starburst were a gamble, though, because if you opened one of those, like, double yellow packets, oh, uh, man. Yeah, that's not good. Just give it that's up right double there. Double yellow. Why did they even do that? Just Come to on. be cruel. Yeah, yeah. No, not so good. Awful. But, yeah, anything chocolate. But I think the Reese's Cups were pretty much, like, Reese's Cups that are to pretty me, awesome. Yeah, like, I could, I'm a grown-up. I can eat Reese's Cups, like, literally anytime I want. But I don't know what it is about Halloween Reese's Cups. Well, I don't. It's not like I go trick or treating anymore, so I don't even know what I'm comparing it to. But when I was a kid, like I wanted anything chocolate, but the Reese's cups were like that was the the primo for yeah. me. Yeah. Reese's cups were great. Now yeah. you're talking about the or full any, cups, not the little anything, any okay. Reese's, anything, okay. whatever form, shape, whatever. If it's a pumpkin, if it's the little mini cups, if it's the yeah. full size, I didn't care. Any I Reese's, Reese's, as long as it was yeah. chocolate with peanut butter inside. Chocolate peanut butter is a pretty banging combination. It is. We have like very little of that in the house these days because Archer's allergic. Then again, he's mm. very careful too. So it's not like okay. we need to be super okay. worried, but yeah, yeah. Chocolate mint is also such a great combination. Do you prefer, <sighs> if you had, if you had a choice, not Halloween though. If you had a choice between uh, Junior Mints or a Peppermint Patty, what would you go with? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. They're both really good. I know, I like them both They're too. They're both really good. Junior Mints are Fun to eat. They are. They're such a There's weird shape. There's nothing else shape. like them. And you can like squish it with your tongue. Yeah. That's pretty fun. But I do get a little more sick of those. Like if you got to eat, because you got to eat like a whole box whole or whatever. Box, yeah. So I don't know. The, they do. They, the they, convenience of the peppermint patty is pretty great. Yeah. You know, it's like individually packaged mm -hmm. kind of a thing. I don't know. I like them both. I like them both for different reasons. I can't choose. It's too too much. How about that? Too much to decide. Yeah. Who shocking. Who would have thought? Shocking. <laughs> I don't know mm. what I was expecting. Yeah, right. Um, I like all the ones you said. As a kid, I was okay. mostly mostly. I'm in the opposite though. I like I like chocolate, but I feel like for you know Christmas and Halloween, whether mm. you're getting something in your stocking, or your trick or treat bag, the little fun size chocolate stuff are just smaller versions of what you can kind of get for the rest of the year. Um, I feel like there mm. are okay. more things that were like not available in for full versions. I guess like mm -hmm. um, as a kid getting a full box of nerds wasn't super common. Like you'd have to really track down those nerd boxes. Um, so getting the little mini nerd boxes, mm. I thought was really fun. And really the same fun. things with the Smarties, those little, I think they're called different things in different parts of the world, but- um, Smarties? I, I like them a lot because I can suck on one and then the the edges kind of dissolve and I can nibble those. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And then about. there's a heart. There's it's a, always like harder in the harder middle. Harder core. Yeah. yeah. So, so I can make those last for a really long time. So I always Ugh. thought those were cool. Why do you and want them to last though? They're not that good. They're not, but they were. Better than Necco wafers though. You ever had those yeah, things? Yeah, those Necco are wafers are the worst. It's like medicine. Yeah. The Smarties though, I think that they were special because I only got them during holidays. Okay. Because in like Snickers and Reese's, like those would happen throughout the year. I, I, I feel like with Halloween, there were some candies that I only attributed to Halloween, mm. and I think they have a soft spot with me because, okay. not because of their flavor, but because they were those special Halloween candies. Fair enough. A little, little um, mini things of spree. 
or mm. little mini things of sweet tarts mm. I also really liked. Um, I always did like hard candies more because I could make them last. I took my time with them. I'm like, mm. I suck on my candy, make it last a long, long time. Yeah, I'm just um, like, give me that chocolate. Now, to to go back on your Reese's wagon, though, I just thought about this as you were talking. Okay. When I get a tiny little bag of Reese's Pieces. Yeah, you like those? Those, I it's love the Reese's same, Pieces. It's not the same. And they were, I think it was a rarity thing. I think the Reese's Pieces, yeah. like, I never bought Reese's pieces. No, you never. They're very uncommon compared to all, all of these. Other. Like you can buy them. Yeah. Um, but remember, they used to come in like the tiniest little bag. Even the full mm -hmm. size bag was pretty small. Yeah, I just ate some the other day. I love Reese's pieces. Yeah. But I never, even as a kid, I remember always judging other kids that called it Reese's. I'm like, it's not Reese's. It is the last name yeah. of someone they named call Reese. like Reese's Pieces. Oh, God. And you're like, what? That always drove me nuts. Like, why are you calling it that? I feel like that was you the- You don't ever say Pieces. No, I feel like that was the earliest other way. example of me being judgmental of another human being was correcting them on Reese's Pieces. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's, you can track it back to that moment. Yeah. That's when I started judging other people. <laughs> was right there. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. I think that's really uh, But judgment. anything but dots. Even when I was a kid, I'd get a box of dots. No, I was like, God! Not, not a fan of the dots. They're huh? so... They're, they don't have a lot of flavor. They're so sticky. They are sticky. And yeah. then Swedish fish, for that same reason. The Swedish fish are like dots with they're only one bad. flavor. They're not as bad, though. They they're are. It's the same thing in a different shape, but only one flavor. They are worse than dots. Yeah, but you can kind of like nibble on them a little bit more. Why would you want to? It's you like don't... it's like dots, but only one flavor. That's what I just said. That makes them bad. <laughs> no, that makes them worse. Bad. I don't know. Anyway. I'm not like crazy about those. I mean, it's not chocolate. So it's like any of these that you're talking about here, I'm like, that would be, I would eat all, like all the Halloween candy. I would eat all the chocolate first, even like Tootsie Rolls before I'd eat anything else. Even Tootsie Rolls? Yeah. That's barely chocolate. Yeah, it, it's you're, you're right. <laughs> but given Tootsie Rolls Over versus hard any, candy, yeah. all other non-chocolate. You are a chocolate fiend, man. I am okay. all about some chocolate. Oh, man. I Always remember, have been. I remember during during like the worst of COVID, sometimes we get uh, holiday chocolates and things sent to the office. Mm -hmm. And a lot... During the COVID years, especially, you know, 2020, 2021, I was one of the few people in the office here in communication That's with true. you and your team. And I was like, hey, we got this thing sent to us. It's uh, just a bunch of chocolate. And then Rich will be like, all right, just hand it out amongst the team. And Brian will be like, well, hey, oh, hang on. Hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> How much is there? <laughs> Drew will be like, yeah, we got that. We got this chocolate in, but it's not really enough to share with everybody. Can He'll be like, can you, why don't you like set you that aside? <laughs> and I'll, 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 I'll take care of that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, I'll bring it home for my kids. Just set it aside. It's the a kids little would bit. never see it. They never see it. <laughs> Anything chocolate that I ever bring home for my kids, they never see it. I don't let them. They don't, they don't appreciate it like I do. My I kids love that. dots. That's like one of their oh favorite candies. They love dots. They do love nerds too. My kids love nerds. Nerds are good. And they like they like chocolate, but they're not like all about it like I am. Do you remember when we were kids and the and they first released the cookies and cream Hershey bar? Yeah. That was an epic moment. Like, yeah. I think everybody was just obsessed with those for a couple of years. I appreciate those. Do you suck on those until all the chocolate's gone? You just have crunchy bits? I mix it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mix it up. I'll do that, but then often I'll just eat it because I like to eat chocolate. <laughs> Even white chocolate. White chocolate is the yeah. last pick choice of chocolate for me. But it's still what do you, what do you, it's really not even chocolate. How do you feel about those weird vanilla Tootsie Rolls though? No. 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 Do you, remember, do you remember we bought a whole bag for Sam? Yeah, they're not great. Our operations manager, Sam, like is one of the few people I know that actually loves those vanilla Tootsie Rolls and they are just weird. Not great. Weird. No. I don't know. Let me, please let me know if you like the vanilla Tootsie Rolls and I, because I need to think There's other about, flavors too, aren't there? Aren't they they like are. Other? There's a lot of yeah, weird flavors. There's a lot of flavors. I feel like the vanilla is like the top of the weird flavors though. It's like the most common of hmm. the uncommon. Yeah. Anyway, that, that that's the Halloween candy. Fair enough. <laughs> part Fair of enough. this. All right. You want to check out this crazy pen? I think I'd like to, yeah. Ooh. Let's unbox a uh, Namiki elephant, shall we? Let's. So it comes in this big, this is a thick, this is like a double layered corrugated card. That thing here. is thick. It's got this paper here. Now it's a, you break it, you bought it kind of a situation. So I'm going to try not to, I'm going to try to handle this. We talked about using gloves with this and I was like, that's a little bit silly. Yurushi is a very durable material. It my, really is. my fingers are not going to do anything to it. So you is got this, this is this cloth? green. No, it's like a it's like a press press board sort of. It's like a cardboard, but it's like a like a pressed fiber, I guess. Oh, it's very interesting. So I'm going to tilt it up just so I can kind of shimmy it out of here because I feel like 
that might actually be the safest way to remove it from its box. Oh yes, this is the behind the scenes you don't often get to see when we're prepping a regular video. Okay, so I'll set this aside. Wow. It's a big box, man. That is. It's a big box, okay. So I need to like get myself a wide berth here. All right, there we go. So this is like a, um, I've seen this on their other pens. It's like a cloth of sorts. Yeah. You know, very thin cloth. Oh my gosh, Ooh, look at that. That's what's up. Ooh, I that's like that different. darker wood. I know, yeah. usually they have that like balsa wood feeling yeah. stuff. This is different. Yeah, Paloina is usually the wood that they use. So, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Pal -pal -ma -ma -ma. Pal -pal Polonia, I think it's, I don't know exactly how it's uh, pronounced actually. This is a really nice box actually. Wow. I mean, it's I, they normally don't have, it's no. normally just like a straight up box. This has got like nice profile to it. I'm sure it's heavier too. It feels a oh, little Brian, heavy. Oh, Brian, look at those little little yeah. chunk, chunky things on the side here. Yeah, those are um, miter, uh, uh, what are they called? Oh, gosh. So it's called a miter when you do like, um, essentially you cut like a 45 degree angle on there and they are called, oh my gosh, I can't remember what they're called, but basically- Mi Miter joints. They, they cut a slot in there and they glue in an extra piece of wood. It helps reinforce the, um, the miter joint there. Yeah. Very cool. Slick. And it's got, of course, got the Namiki logo in the top there. And then, you know, just plain wood there. So that's, I mean, that's solid wood. It definitely feels heavier than your normal Namiki box. Some foam to protect it. And oh my gosh, look at this. You get like a whole library of materials. Goodness. So yeah, Mamoru Wakabayashi is the artist who designed this pen. Um, certificate of Authenticity there. This one's number 24. Um, in case you are interested in collecting this exact one. So some beautiful pictures and information here in Japanese. I wonder if the other one is in English, if that's maybe why they included both. Yeah, probably. Yep, yay, in English. So it gives some history about, you know, African elephant and all that. Now, I'm very curious to see this pen in real life because this is like more colorful than any Namiki pen that I've seen. So a little polishing cloth. I was seeing if it's like logoed or anything. It doesn't look like it. And there Looks it is. Like uh, yeah. Okay, well, first off, I'll turn it around here a little bit because it does have, um, you know, a numbered like an engraved plate. So this pen's out of 99. Um, this is a limited edition. There you go, numbered. It's got a special bottle. So this is like their normal Namiki bottle, I believe. It's just, oh boy, I'm trying to like pull it out of here gracefully. So it's their normal bottle, but they usually do a special oh, neat. thing on the top for the, the limited editions. Um, but yeah, you probably wanna see the pen, huh? I do. Okay. So gently pull this thing out of here. Oh, there's a little surprise under there. Let's Cartridges see, probably. See that is for, uh, yeah, I think so. So Wait, this, no, not cartridges. No, it's not cartridges. This is an eyedropper filling. Oh, pen. yes. This is so probably a, the eyedropper. Yeah, the eyedropper. So let's check it out. So yeah, if you're actually using this pen, it's got a big ink capacity. Yeah, this is the eyedropper. So we'll see that real quick. Da, 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 da. There you go. Nothing crazy, but you know, nice glass. Okay, I'll box that up later. All right, so we got it sealed up in plastic here. Well, it's not sealed, I guess it's just in a sleeve. Wow, oh my gosh. This color is intense. Oh my, so this thing is literally- I have never completely seen covered. anything like this. Completely covered in this. So there's multiple techniques of the makie. Oh, I do often get them mixed up, but it's Taka, Togadashi, and then the other one that I can't remember that is a mixture of the two. Um, you've got some rodden in here. Um, but essentially you've got like burnishing in here, you've got gold powder happening, you've got multiple layers of like raised, like basically three dimensional lacquer. Look at that, that rodden in the trees. The rodden in the trees, absolutely. But the color, I have never seen color this vibrant on an Arushi pen before, on an, on an Amiki especially. That looks beautiful, oh my gosh. Wow, and there's like even like tiny rodden specks like on the elephant. Oh, I see here. that. I didn't even notice that until seeing it wow. in person here. This is nuts. This is really, really beautiful. 
And then just like the elephant, like the texture on the trunk there, like that is three dimensional. You can actually feel that. And you can feel the texture on the grass and the bird down here. And then I don't know if you can see that, but down here you can see the the Mickey logo with the number on it. Mm -hmm. And then I was gonna say the artist's um, signature on here. And then, yeah, nothing on top. So they did this one clipless. Sometimes they'll do, sometimes they'll do round tops. Sometimes they do flat tops. It's really the artist's choice. Um, Cause at this point it's basically a canvas for the pen. And then a huge nib. I mean, Man. huge nib. Like look at it compared to my thumb. And I have big hands. That is a massive nib. Looks beautiful. So it's got Mount Fuji on the nib. Yeah, put it next to a Lamy nib. Oh, here's a, yeah, here's a Lamy All-Star. <laughs> Jeez. It's like a joke compared to that thing. Look how massive that is. <laughs> like literally like the, the, the wings of this nib are like the, just the tines from the wings is as big as the whole Lamy nib. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So you get that same uh, Yurushi on the grip of the pen as well. You don't feel any texture on the grip, um, but yeah, it's stunning. Wow. And like, it's amazing just like, it almost looks metallic on here. I don't know what they used on the elephant, but it looks gorgeous. It's like this gunmetal kind of color with texture on the ears and everything. This is like blowing my mind, the detail on this. And then even the feed on this, it's got a huge feed, of course, because the nib is massive. It's an ebonite feed that they've also Irushi lacquered. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice little, nice little touch that they do for these these high-end pens. It's so crazy the difference between the look of the cap and the barrel. It looks like two completely different landscapes. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's kind it's, of the- It's almost like two different pieces. That's kind like, of the idea, right? Like you have the, I don't know if this is technically supposed to be like a sunrise or a sunset, um, but I mean, that's kind of the idea, right? So you've got like the darker tone here and then- The barrel looks more like what Namiki traditionally does with their designs. Yeah, yeah. They'll usually have ones like these are the most vibrant of the colors that they'll typically have. But then like the cap the is green. like something completely out of character for them. It's amazing though. Even just like the green, like for the water that they have here, like it almost looks like it shades a little bit because it looks like they did some like gold powder or silver powder. I can't mm -hmm. tell which it I can is. See. Like kind of at the top there and then it shades down. Like the amount of detail is insane. Like this is why you get a pen that's this expensive. This is all work done by hand. One person. Yeah. And it's just, the level of detail is incredible. And then just like that circle, the sun. Even like, do you see the gradient on the sun? How it's orange at the bottom? Yeah, look at that. You get like this ombre effect on the Crazy. sun even. I mean, it's stunning. And then it's got like a little baby elephant with its <laughs> like mommy. And you can see even see like the tiny little specks of rotten dust on the elephants there. The birds are like raised up here on the sun. I mean, this is the kind of thing, it's like a it's like a nice painting or it's like a nice piece of artwork where you can just stare at it for hours and keep finding new things to appreciate. Yeah. Um, and what's also cool, I mean, you're like, how the heck do you fill this pen? Well, what's always amazing about the Mikis is like their tolerances and stuff are so fine on these. Um, it's so it's an eyedropper pen, but I mean, that's how it splits off right there. You couldn't even see a line there, but yeah, you can't, when you fit the pen together, it's like, I where'd mean, it it's go? Seamless, it's gone. Seamless. So that is always a really cool element to see. Cause you can see like, there's a little bit of the elephant's tusk down at the bottom there, but that has to line up just perfectly. And it does just fine details like that are amazing. That's a big pen. I mean, <laughs> Actually, it doesn't look that big in my hand because <laughs> I have pretty big hands. Um, but I mean, Drew, we know people that carry like pens like this around. Like yep. they carry emperors around and use them as their daily carry pens. Well, it's a lot. It's easy to forget that these pens are indeed made to write. They're made Absolutely. to function. And in fact, like the artists that make these pens, you know, obviously, you know, they're expensive and they're collector pieces. Look at that. And, this this and, cap um, is like most of my hand. Right. Just the cap. Yeah. So obviously, you know, it, no one would look down upon you if you just like wanted to have this as an art piece and, and not actually write with it, you know, because it's, it's that nice of a, of a work of art. But, you know, we're told that the artists that make these, they get like no more satisfaction than knowing that whoever 
ends up with these pens actually like uses them and yeah. writes with them and enjoys them every day. So they really are meant to be used and enjoyed. And Yurushi is an incredibly durable, it's like the most durable natural material um, that you can have as a finish. So it will hold up pretty well. Um, you know, as long as you're reasonable with it, don't go like driving over it with your car. But uh, yeah, beautiful pen, beautiful pen. It is uh, an absolute treat. It's got like little pieces of rotten in the elephant's eyes. Just a little piece there and there. Oh my gosh, right there. Yeah, just right there. So it's like these tiny little details that you pick up on. It's amazing. That's insane. There you go. So you want to know why a pen costs this much? It's because of all these details and all the handwork required to do it. All right, so one thing that I did this weekend was mm -hmm. watch two movies with my son. All right. And I love watching movies. Is Shannon, that one thing you did or is that two things you did? Oh, it was I one thing that I did twice, I guess. Did you sit down and watch two movies at once? Because that would no, be one event. Different days, one Saturday, one Sunday. I would call that doing two things. Okay, well, we'll call it that for the sake of argument. <laughs> um, I'm literally just oh, I giving know. you hassle oh, for I know. no reason. Oh, I know. It's, oh, it's about that time. Um, <laughs> but... I really place a lot of value in watching movies with people who I care about. I don't, I'd say it's watching movies is something that's just very near and dear to my heart and being mm -hmm. able to share that with somebody I care for yeah. makes it all the better. Shannon does not understand that. Okay. Does not, it is like, she's perfect. I love her. But <laughs> if that, that one thing, she just doesn't care about movies. And I'm that's like, so funny. I know it just, it kills me because I, I, if I like something, I, I want to share it with someone I really, really like. So yeah. naturally, to her, I'm like, I really like this thing. I really like you. Let's put those things together. Watch this thing with me. Oh, but yeah. She, but she's just like, no, I have no interest in that. Like, oh, yeah. the whole thing, I got to sit down and watch that. Like, yeah, this is me with all my hobbies with Rachel. I try to get her excited about what I'm into. Never. It never works. Yeah. She's never into it. Well, Welding, she, woodworking, she, puzzles. She's not even, to, like, like, it's one thing for her not to be into Star Wars or whatever. That's fine. I get okay. that. But she doesn't even like movies in general. It's like, a pretty broad category of something to like or not like. She's just not a movie person. She's a, she likes TV I mean, shows. Now, she will watch the same duration of TV shows. She will watch three hours this, worth of TV shows. I feel like this is chocolate flavor. Chocolate. Just, you, I think so. You bit off the chocolate The brown thing. tastes different to me. The brown tastes different than the yellow. I got to be able to look this up. Sorry to interrupt you. Hmm. Oh, no, that's definitely chocolate. different, right? That's definitely yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Is that weird Tootsie Roll that's chocolate? That's that's why I bought the autumn. Oh bags. god, it's so bad. It tastes like a like a brown tootsie tootsie pop. It's like a it's like a hard tootsie roll. Oh, that's so upsetting. It's like a tootsie roll you find in like the bottom of the pantry, ah! and you're like, I don't I haven't bought tootsie rolls in years. And you find it, and you're like, well, it is chocolate. <laughs> then you eat it. I say you as like oh. most people do this. This oh, is that's so upsetting. Do. That doesn't taste like food. You handled the first uh, candy corn a little better. The than chocolate's that. way worse. What? The chocolate doesn't taste like, like I was ready for the candy corn flavor. I'm like, yep, there it is. Well, you've got to know that it's not actually chocolate. That chocolate yeah. stuff, though, is something way different. It's almost like it was close enough for me to realize how far away it was from chocolate. Okay. I don't Fair know. Enough. Anyway, I got to watch two movies. First one, I wanted to watch like you know, a, a live action movie, but he asked if we could watch a Disney movie. And at that point I'm like, I don't care. I just want to watch a movie with somebody. So we watched Treasure Planet, which is one of his favorites. Mm -hmm. And I will say that that is an underrated Disney film. That is a pretty solid movie. I've came seen out, that one. It came out in 2002, so we would not have seen it. Yeah. We were graduating like, high school. Yeah, we had no interest in that stuff um, at that time. But it's, it's, it's solid. It's a solid movie. Good, really good animation. So we watched that. I enjoyed that. And then the next day, um, we watched Karate Kid Part 2. Okay. And that was really good. I noticed it I was not that. available to stream anywhere. Okay. So I went up into the attic and found my Karate Kid 2 DVD. Oh. So pop that bad boy out. Not um, Blu-ray, DVD. DVD. Wow. It was one of those ones that had two sides on it. One for widescreen, one, one for full frame. Okay. So yeah. it was probably like... Yeah. 2003. Yeah, it's you know. right in that era. So uh, I did put the wrong side down because I'm like, it says one side says widescreen, one side says full frame, but you you don't know where the reader is like on the disc. On, it's on the, down. Yeah, usually. Yeah, because if you have, a, if you have like a regular like music CD, so if you if you, you always have the label on the top side and the the reader is almost always on the bottom. So you put the label that says widescreen up. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. If it says widescreen, does that mean that the widescreen is actually right. on the underside? Right. Oh, that I don't know. I don't know either. So I, I did it wrong the first time. I don't know what I did, but I did it wrong. So it was the other thing. But oh, anyway. Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought it about doesn't, that. It's not helpful. It right. should just say this side down for widescreen or whatever. That's a lot. But that's a lot to put in that tiny little space that they I have. was working at Circuit City during the whole widescreen versus full frame thing where, where movies were often sold as mm -hmm. either or. Okay. And I daily had these conversations with people about why they need to pick widescreen. They're like, well, I don't have a widescreen TV. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Do you want to see the full movie? Right. Well, yeah. All right. Well, here's what's clipping on every clipping on. day. Like I was, I was. I felt like I was well, I in the vanguard of that discussion. Like it's my yeah. job to help educate these you're people. You're like educating people, but they don't even care about the end they, of the They're like, no, I just want to see the whole movie. I'm like, you're not seeing the whole movie. You're seeing a portion of the movie you don't understand. Yeah. Oh, it was a daily battle, Brian. Oh, I Because it was, it was an, I, I just had this moment where I, the first time I saw a widescreen version of Ghostbusters, a movie that mm. I had seen so many times. Yeah. And realized there was a scene where there was a Ghostbuster like that wasn't even there in the version that I grew up with. I'm like, oh, Egon is there. He was there this whole time and I didn't know it. So after that, I'm like, everybody needs to buy widescreen stuff. Come on, wow. you don't know what you're missing. So I was very passionate about that. I was probably super annoying to I customers. It's not much an issue anymore because everybody's got, I mean, they make TVs to be yeah. more widescreen. They don't make now, four right? by three TVs anymore. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, watched two movies. That was great. Archer actually really did like Karate Kid 2, which is rare because he's normally just wants to watch cartoons so Fair um enough. well he's getting older you know yeah. more mature i guess so that was that was fun um we had dinner with friends on sunday as we normally do each sunday evening mm -hmm. uh, my friend jeffrey's sister was in town and her husband from scotland and uh she's hilarious um but one interesting thing happened where um <clears throat> i don't know how this happened but we were the table had exhausted a bottle of Thousand Island dressing. And someone, I think Tracy, Jeffrey's sister, started just pretending to like dump it into my son's water. And and he was like, oh no, because you know, she was just messing with him like, oh, I'm gonna dump it in the water, but it was totally empty. Uh -huh. But somehow that devolved into daring Archer to drink a his glass of water that has been soiled with remnants of Thousand Island dressing. I can see the the logical like he progression. Is, he is so picky. I didn't think for a thousand years he would ever entertain that. But after he was offered ten dollars, he was like, "I'll I'll drink some of this for ten dollars." Ten dollars? I would drink it for ten dollars. I would too. But Archer doesn't even eat chicken. Like yeah. he doesn't even <laughs> like this is not a. But uh, did he, he drink it? He did. Not not the whole thing. They said drink it until the like the this this level, and he did. Like and it was just this like peachy orangey water wow. like oh. it looked disgusting yeah thousand island oh like, watered down even like, thousand island not watered down i don't yeah. like oh my god but he did and uh she ended up only having a 20 so he got 20 dollars. get out of here yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh but like she cleaned up man 20 bucks i shoot I'm like this. I hope this doesn't start something. Drink it for less than that. Yeah. Now he's gonna yeah. be like, "How much are you gonna give me?" He's gonna be that kid at school. It's like, "Hey, will you uh, you mix like the ketchup oh. and the mashed potatoes or whatever?" And be like, "Hey, will you give me two bucks to eat this?" He, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but hey, uh, the future mukbanger on YouTube. Oh God, you know, I just eat stuff for people's entertainment. Oh man, <laughs> as long as it's a bunch of hot dogs and chicken nuggets. Um, That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that happened. That was all right. That was interesting. That's interesting. Yep, it sure was. Um, and I started pulling up my tomato plants, which is a little sad because it's oh. it's the end of the season. Um, okay. They're they're done. They have reached the end of their lifespan. Yeah. They, they did not work out as well as last seasons. Really? Yeah. I got a lot of cherry tomatoes, but my big tomatoes just. I did mm. two 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 plants of uh, cherry tomatoes, two plants of larger ones, and both breeds of the larger tomatoes just did not produce as well. We got a we had a really mm. late start to the season. It was really. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. For a while. Yeah, it really was. Um, so yeah, we'll try again next year. Most of our plants that we planted died this year. Too. Yeah. Not and and my green peppers yeah. barely did anything. The herbs went nuts. Um, okay. A lot of green onions. So that was easy. I'll probably do that again next year. I just need to remember to use them. Yeah. Because like, you can use green onions for just like anything. Yeah, but they're like 
I don't know. They're like a garnish. Almost, they are, in my opinion. Like they are. I'm really, not like cent centering a meal around green no, onions. No, but they can make a big difference in something really boring like ramen noodles. If you oh, just, yeah. If you just yeah. have like a pack of ramen noodles, you put some green onions in there. Big yeah. difference. True. Yeah. True. Um. So yeah, kind of a. Uh, I'm thinking I might try some autumn crops. You can do some stuff. Nothing super exciting. Usually hmm. like, you know, cabbage or something, which I wouldn't use. So. I'm trying to figure out is there yeah. a, is there a fall crop that I, I could buy actually cabbage use? for like fifty cents. Oh well, gardening isn't about being cost effective. It's just oh. being fun. And what is it about? It's just fun. Yeah, because uh, there's nothing that like you can. I have like, a black thumb, so I kill everything. Yeah, I mean, so like I don't even get the enjoyable. Part no, like of nothing. The, you're not saving money, like yeah. unless you don't meant, unless you don't pay yourself anything for your time, um, hmm. like corn. The effort it takes to grow corn versus buy corn is like no corn is subsidized. In oh the my US. god, like so no. crazy. Um, anyway, uh, it's like thirty cents for a year of corn. We are um, the season finale of uh, House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones spinoff, is this weekend, so we're super excited about that. Okay, that's right. And uh, we finished watching Barry on HBO, so mm. we moved on to Deadwood again. Deadwood is probably the TV series that we have rewatched the most other than like the office okay um but uh i just it's like our favorite show of all time wow it's mm. foul and not <laughs> appropriate for anybody but it's like poetry with cursing it's like tarantino and shakespeare together wow all and right. cowboys it's it's marvelous we love it to death wow um and then video games brian oh yeah i finished horizon zero dawn i know you were curious about I that i was wondering i was just about to ask finished replaying that okay. replayed it on new game plus so i got to keep all my armor and, and stuff from the previous game so that was a new and exciting journey for me what a treat so now i'm ready for the sequel okay which i'm waiting to see go on sale this holiday season so i'll pick that up so in the meantime i decided to install two games on my playstation i installed Star Wars Battlefront 2, mm. and I installed the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've beaten them both. Okay. I'm going to redo one of them. I think I'm going to, because Star Wars is like a first-person shooter game that has right. a campaign that's kind of like, eh, it's fine. Yeah. I'll probably end up doing Final Fantasy, though, because that's like a super in-depth story. Yeah, good, you, solid like, you like those acting. immersive yeah. Like, games. Yeah. And I've replayed that one, but it has new downloadable content now. There's like a bonus story at the end that I Ooh. have not done yet, so... What a treat. I hope you're excited for me. I'm very excited. I can barely contain myself <laughs> just sitting here. So that is my world right I now. I have like the Drew face when I'm like going deep on like resin types. And then and I'll probably like, and I'll uh -huh, probably put uh -huh. some put some boobinga on my uh oh, yeah. rotary yeah. torvals. Oh, you should do that. Yeah. Your rotary and, torvals. Yeah. That's right. And probably carve some tall for sale yeah. in my shop. Yeah. Wood shop. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Well, I need some brackets for the uh brackets are pretty essential. <laughs> yeah, brackets yeah. and joints. Mm -hmm. Can do some turbo joints. Turbo, yeah. <laughs> well, if you if you're doing turbo joints without a bracket, you're really not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I just want to see how far you go with it, but we're working with Drew. Yeah. Mm. Um, very interesting, Drew. Thank you. For you're that. welcome. Too loud. I wish I had anything to contribute to anything you're saying there, but I've literally have not seen or played anything that you just mentioned. Well, I believe but Horizon I know is how much you going enjoy to get a this. Netflix special soon, so you might be able to. Oh, yeah. okay. Let me jump right on <laughs> that. Um, okay. Well, I've also had an interesting last week or so. So, I mean, you're you're kind of like me, Drew. If you're into something, you usually let people know about it. I would try to stop me, especially like the people that you are the people that don't care to. at all about it. Yes, yeah, people that are closest to you that you like. Like, hey, I enjoy you. I enjoy this thing. Absolutely, can we join you in this thing together, yes. and then we can all be just enjoying ourselves. I'm certain that there are many people watching right. and listening right now that know exactly it's, what we're talking about. It's logical, but yep. you know, sometimes. It's uh, is this harder than it seems like it should be to get those who are close to you and love you and care for you and respect you to even just consider trying the thing that you're desperately asking them to try. Um, and this happens. I mean, I'm into a lot of things, so I'm kind of used to it. I'm just wondering which member of your family is are you trying to get to? Do so something? this one was all of them. So all three, both my kids and Rachel. Um, I wanted to teach them how to play chess. 
Oh, yes. So Rachel, I mean, if she played chess, she would beat the crap out of me. She's really smart. She has a great memory. But she just, for whatever reason, just refuses to, like, learn how to play. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So she doesn't currently know how to play? No. She did, like, computer chess mm -hmm. back in the day, but she really just, like, it told you what move options you had. And she said she, like, never won. I was like, yeah, because you don't actually know what you're doing. You're mm -hmm. just, like, moving pieces. It's like the whole point is you can, like, see moves ahead and then, like, see how they play together. Anyway. I know enough to play without breaking any rules and lose every time. Okay. But that's it. Fair enough. I mean, that's something, right? Yeah, like but, you but, could, but you there, could sit down and play. But like right? we were talking about last week, and I didn't even know that you could swap out a piece if you got to the other side. So I don't know yeah, all the rules, yeah, but the I know you I know pawn to the other side. Yeah. I know what not to do. But yeah. So yeah, there's like, and there's like different rules depending on blah blah blah. I but, also don't have the patience for it. Is that a thing where they just can't sit still long enough? You do need some patience. Yeah. yeah. I don't have that. But I mean, I don't know. Anything on a board, I'm just like ah. But see, what I like about ch what I like about chess is that. Even when you're not playing, it's not like, you know, when you're playing Monopoly or whatever, there's some strategy, but largely you're like, you're rolling something, you move a couple of things, you do, then you, there's some element of choice to it, but there's a lot of chance in there as well. With chess, it's like, you get a lot more like active participation in what you're doing. Yeah, I can see that. And even when you're not moving your piece, you're either thinking about the next move you're going to do, or you're thinking like, where are they going to move their pieces? Like you move something and you're like, okay, what are they probably going to do to react to that? And then how am I going to anticipate that? So you're like, you're pretty like actively engaged. If you like play it enough and kind of get comfortable with it, then it gets more and more fun. You get in like in a kind of a state of flow. That's when it really gets fun. And I remember really enjoying it as a kid, but basically my entire adult life, I've never had anyone in my family or near me that has like wanted to play chess. So I really haven't played chess actually in probably two decades. So I still remember how to do it and all that. And I can do like online and all that kind of stuff. But I like the physical, like the tactile pieces. Oh yeah, and some and sets kind of are super cool too. Yeah. So I wanted to, but then like for years, I think Joseph would do really well too. He has not been, to, he's like doubled down like Rachel. He's just like, no, I do not want to learn it. I refuse to even sit down, even begging, pleading, anything. I'm like, please, please, one game. Can you try it? No, 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 no. Hard line, just like to the point where I'm like, what? Ugh. Why? Like, why are you so hard lined against this when it doesn't even really matter? You know, whatever. Sometimes the harder so, you push, the more yeah. they dig in. So, I mean, I was never rude about it, but I was just like, I think you guys would enjoy it. Like, we could play it together. It could be a thing. You know, I tried every tactic I had. and None of it worked. So... Out of the blue, out of the blue, I think it's because Ellie was the one who, who started this. She came up to me and was just like, I want to learn how to play chess. And I was like, what? Like, she wasn't even the one that I was really working on. And if you remember, I've talked about in Pencast before, Ellie is very, very competitive, mm -hmm. especially with board games. And I do not go easy on her. Part of it is because I think she has a lot of potential and I think she can learn a lot. Oh my God. From being like actually played against. Like I do, I will not cater to, you know, it's like if a kid's not that interested, I'll keep them actively engaged and I'll play it down. But if a kid's like really trying and competitive and like wants to learn, I'm like, all right, I'm going to give you the full experience. So that way, when you beat me, you know, you've really beat me. I thought about that this weekend, actually. Yeah? I thought about you because you covered this last week. Yes. And I've made my daughter cry. I was playing on multiple occasions. Uh huh. Yeah, that playing happened. Playing a board game. That happened to me this week. With love. Um, with love. We were playing Super Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, I'm like, oh, Archer's getting pretty good. So I started trying yeah. harder and I just kind of I beat him repeatedly. And mm -hmm. it ended very poorly. Like yeah. he. It will. I will, I, 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 I asked him, I was like, do you want me to try my hardest? And he's like, no. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> if you don't want me to, just tell me that and I will. Yeah. And he says, like, I just, See, want, I just want to win sometimes. I was like, okay, well, let me know because. Yeah. So I'll do that. Like, I'll accommodate. Like, if, they, if they're not trying to, like, be really competitive yeah. and win, they just want to have a good time. I'm all about that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. So I felt no bad. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't know. I thought. I thought so we you were, just like beat the crap out of him. And I thought we were, <laughs> I thought we were like really going, you know. All but right, yeah, right. no, fair I, enough. I felt, I, yeah. So, all right, that's all right. Yeah, and put a little bit in the therapy bucket, you know, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but Ellie, like, she's very capable. She's very competitive. Oh yeah, she'll talk smack. She'll do all the things. So you're kind of just like, all right, all right. You want to play? You want to play? We're gonna play. And she wants to play, but she wants to win. 
and she gets really upset. But she does she want you to try your hardest? Uh, I think it's less about that, but she just wants she wants to win. She just wants to win no matter what. But she doesn't want to but does she, would she be okay if you let her win? <sighs> yeah, maybe, but I don't know. It's You don't want to do that. Yeah, that's <laughs> just cheap. It's cheap, you know. It's like I don't know how that would come across to her, but even still, I don't want I don't want to teach her that. You know what I mean? So, anyway, lots of conversation, lots of tough love with her. And part of it too is like, it's a humility thing too. Like she'll talk a lot of smack, but I don't want her to essentially like be borderline, like bully with other mm, kids. That's so a, some of it yeah. is like teaching sportsmanship and you can teach sportsmanship all you want, but until you yourself have lost and then have to 100%. congratulate the other person and say it was a good game and be a good sport about it. We had that talk too. Yeah. Cause so, he walked off all fussy and I was like, hey, no, you just, yeah, and exactly. he was just like, I'm so bad at this, I suck. I'm you, like, hey, no. Yeah, you're like, hey, no, 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 no. If, if, like, if you lose at something, instead of talking about how bad you are, why don't you congratulate the other person and say what a good, good yeah, job they did. Like, yeah, that, exactly. That's what you gotta do. Yeah, and it takes time. You gotta say it like yeah. a thousand times, yeah. but then it starts to click. But I can say now, over the years, Ellie has gotten much better about her sportsmanship. And even when she loses now, she used to like get teary eyed. And like, mm -hmm. if she wasn't like full on upset, she would, you could tell it was just like yeah. really hard on her, but it's gotten so much better now. So Excellent. it's working over time. But anyway, so she wanted to learn how to play chess and she like approached me about it. And I was like, cool. So like Perfect. One, one of the groundworks that I laid with trying to get the kids into chess is I bought a um, Super Mario chess set. So oh, like I didn't know that. The pieces are Mario characters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, which is really cool. And so, you know, I was trying to make it as like appealing. And they've been playing with these pieces, like not on the chess set, but right. just like little action figures or whatever. Um, so she wanted to play. And I was like, all right, we're going to play. And I was like, what the heck piece is supposed to be what? Who's supposed to be who? And thankfully, it was like written on the piece. So, I, I mean, I she like sprung it on me. So I was like, <laughs> I was literally like re reading the rules <laughs> that came with the chess board. Because I was like, which one, which one goes where again? Like, which is the queen? And like, like it, it's been that long since I've really been able to play. Um, but so yeah, is it, is it like good her. guys versus bad guys? Like Koopa versus Mario? Um, yeah, so like one, the king and queen is like Bowser and Bowser Jr. Uh -huh. And then the other one is Mario and Luigi. Nice. Interestingly, Luigi's the queen, yeah. So don't know how that works, but there you go. Hmm. And then like Daisy and Peach are the bishops. I don't know. And then you get like oh, Kamex okay. and the bishops on the other side. Okay. So it's like they kind of match them up a little bit, but like the rook is like toad on one set and it's Goombas on the other. So well, Goombas yeah. aren't pawns? No, pawns are just coins. Oh, cool. Pawns are coins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting set. So it's kind of fun. But uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, Ellie wanted to learn and I was like, okay. So I was basically like playing, but really just teaching her. So I sat down, taught her the pieces. She's 10, by the way. She'll be 11 soon in a couple of months. But man, she picked it up quick like scary quick and that's why i was like okay i'm not gonna take it e take it easy on her because she's gonna she's like getting it you know what i mean so i was like all right we're gonna do this thing um yeah and she was to the to the point where like not only did she, i went through like what each piece can do like one time and i had to like correct a couple things here and there and it's a lot to remember for your first time but then it was getting to the point where she was like thinking moves ahead already in like her first game and i was like oh crap it's not gonna be long before she's gonna be able to beat me because she's got it. So the next day she goes to school, plays against her yeah. teacher who's older than me. And we were in a meeting when this happened. She like FaceTimed me right after school. Yep. <laughs> and she was bragging about the fact that she beat her teacher who's like in his early forties, I think. She, she beat her teacher. And then she was playing against another student who her, her teacher was helping the other student and she beat him too. And I was like, oh boy. And then you asked, <laughs> did you lose any? Did you did you lose anybody? She's like, yeah, well, I lost a couple of people, but only while I was trying to trap him, or like trying to trick him, yeah. or something like that. Like she was sacrificing like, some yeah. some low level minions in order yeah. to attack. Like that was, yeah. and she was like, that's some that's some war game stuff, she was man. Like, she was like, yeah, I made some. She's like, I made some recommendations to him, but they weren't good moves. And so he took them. He's like, I didn't say that he should do it. He just said, <laughs> I, I I just said that he could do that. <laughs> And, so, and I'm like, oh boy. Oh, that is ruthless. This girl's playing some mind games, yeah. Oh no. So she she then wanted to play me again, and I beat her again. Yeah. So, you know, but she's she's getting there quick, man. But then, like, the next day, Joseph wanted to learn how to play. Mm. And I was like, get out of here. Rachel's next. I'm, that's I'm trying to work on it. Now <laughs> she's the only one in the family that can't play. So Joseph and Ellie have played. So now it's like the two of them are playing against each other. 
and I'm like sitting on the sidelines. So I'm just like, nice. I kind of want to play. Oh, like, I'm right. Wrong. I wanted to play. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. no. But like, Joseph's excited, but like, Ellie wants to beat her brother. That's oh, yeah. Why. Of course. She wants to beat him, and he's, you know, he's just having fun. He doesn't really care. He's not yeah. nearly as competitive. But yeah, they both like know how to play and all that kind of stuff. So it was good. Like, Joseph, with my help, like beat her the first time, and then she beat him last night. And it's like a thing. So I'm like, all right. I guess it's a thing. So I'm nice. Like, I'm like, Rachel, come on. Like, just if you know how to play, then like all four of us could do something. But they make they make chess boards that you can have like three people, four people, where it's literally like three or four chess. So it's kind of like you ever played like Chinese checkers where it's like you have like the triangle and you have your pieces and everybody kind of like goes into the middle mm -hmm. and it's like a battle royale. Yeah. So it's like that. With I've never played, chess. but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's like that with chess boards, but it's like a giant, like all the squares in the middle, but then all your pieces are on like extra squares that are mm -hmm. on the outside. And so you come in and you're like playing off. I was like, that sounds awesome. But it's like, I literally don't even have that many people that I know that would even know how to play. But that sounds great. So if you're a chess fan and you ever played one of those multi chess sets, they look awesome, but I don't know. Maybe it's not that fun. So anyway. Chess, that's like the thing. Chess. Ellie's like bringing her little Mario chess set to school in her backpack and playing and at school and all that. She's like, we only have one chess set and everybody wants to play. And I was like, this girl's going to be like the chess. That's awesome. You can probably get her so like a little like, travel on. travel pack or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking into it. But yeah, she was like, yeah. She's like, I keep beating the boys and they get really mad. Nice. She's like, they don't want to get beat by a girl. And I was like, don't have any mercy. Too I was bad. Like, if you're better no. than them, you just beat them. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, they might get upset, but whatever. They need to learn, too. No, she can lose on purpose when she has kids. Nah, she's never going to lose on purpose. <laughs> this girl <laughs> is determined. Um, yeah, so then um, we went to Second and Charles for the first time. Yeah. Which, if you're, like, a, you know, into, like, board games and, like, you know, that type of stuff. Or video games everybody or books I know, or, yeah. Board games, video games, books, any of that type of stuff. Everybody knows. And, like, the hobby, you know, crafts and yeah. stuff. Everybody's been there. I'd never been there. Kids had never been there. So we were just, like... Let's go check it out. It's a lot to take in. It is a lot to take in. Holy cow, that place was big. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. And it was like, so the kids were excited. Okay, first off, Saturday morning. Sorry, I know I'm talking a lot. Saturday morning, there was like a yard sale at like a neighborhood that's nearby. Um, like that a bunch of their friends live in. So they were excited because when you're a kid and you don't have a lot of money, you can get some good deals at a yard sale. So we go to yard sales periodically for them just so they can get, you know, Legos and books and like these types of things. So they always enjoy that. So we found out about this yard sale like the night before and they were like all motivated to earn whatever they could to go to this yard sale. And we looked, the weather was gonna be great. And so we were like, okay. So they like wanted to blow leaves off the driveway and like do dishes and all this stuff. So they earned like, you know, 10 bucks, you know, like nothing crazy, but they earned some money. Man, I'm Archer, we've got so much dog here now with three dogs. <laughs> and I'm telling them like, hey, if you, if you, yeah. if you sweep or Swiffer or whatever, that's a point. Yeah. 10 points is 10 bucks. Stick but, with it, man. Nope. Stick with it. Doesn't care. Stick with it. I was like, hey, Betty, I'm about to swiffer. Day. Do you want to do it? One of these days it'll click. No, it's okay. One of these days it'll click. Yeah, just keep trying, Drew. Don't don't, oh, don't not, give up. No, no, no. I, I, I tell him, I'm like, hey, Archer, guess what? I would have had 10 bucks by now if, if, if I was giving myself points. Wait, what? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. Yep. Treat myself. Go. Maybe I'll go buy myself some Lego. There you go. Play right, play with right in front of them. <laughs> Ooh, this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah, put more money in the therapy jar. Um, so yeah, so went to the yard sale. They like got like something little, it was like fifty cents or something like that, and they saved the rest. They weren't like inclined to blow it all. And I was like, who are these children? They're learning how to play chess. They like wanted to work to earn money. They didn't want to blow the money. So then we was like, okay. So we were like. You know, there weren't a ton of people doing the yard sale thing. So I was like, there wasn't like the best stuff there. So we were like, okay, cool. We're, we're, we were already talking about going to second and Charles. And we were like, oh, Joseph, they said like Legos by the piece and, you know, by the ounce or whatever. And, you know, they have like all kinds of stuffed animals and stuff like that. And so we went and Ellie didn't buy anything, which I'm like, what? These are the kids that like will blow any money that they get. Oh, yeah, most kids. You know, at any point. Yeah. yeah. And Joseph got like, like five bucks worth of Lego and saved all the rest of his money. Dang. And, and yeah. And I was just like, what is happening? Who are these children? Um, so yeah, they definitely enjoyed the store, but now they're like saving their money. And then Ellie was talking to, she's like, want, talked about wanting some toy. I don't know what, but you know, she just, you know, her, she's got her birthday near Christmas and then Christmas is coming up. And she was like, I don't think I'm going to buy anything until after Christmas because I'm probably going to get some gifts and stuff and I want to see what I get and then everything will be cheaper after Christmas. And, I get, and I'm just like, 
what is happening here? <laughs> like all this other we've been saying for like a decade to our kids. Wow. Is like giving actually me sticking. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what I did, but like all of a sudden things are starting to click and I'm getting really excited. So um, yeah, just, you know, things paying off with the kid front and we're like doing activities together and things that are like genuinely like enjoyable activities. Like I always enjoy being with my kids, but you know, there's like certain shows that you watch with your kids where you're like, if my kid was not here, I would not watch this show. Yeah. You know, it's enjoyable for the situation. Do you have like a favorite show that they watch that you're actually kind of like into? So they love Lego Masters, mm -hmm. which is like the Lego like competition. Oh, yeah, that's a that is a yeah. genuinely enjoyable show. I love Will yeah. Arnett. It's enjoyable. Yeah. If we had no kids, I would probably watch that show. For me, it's uh, there's a cartoon called Teen Titans Go. Okay. And yeah, yeah. On the surface, it just seems like a crazy cartoon, but the writing is really good, and you can nice. tell that it's being written, uh, written and run by people our age yeah. because there are so many like old school references to like you, you've oh, seen yeah. my brave star shirt the cowboy yeah yeah there were brave star references in there wow like thundercats references stuff that goes way over his head but yeah. i'm just like oh, that's a thundercats reference yeah yes i get so yeah. i I'm, i i i like to watch that one every absolutely now yeah. absolutely so yeah genuinely enjoying the time with my kids um also been spending some time outdoors i mentioned replacing my log bridge which is like falling apart well i finished it it's done. It's now a corduroy And you used corduroy fabric. Yep. No, not at all. But it looks really good. I'll have some pictures to show. But uh, I like, it was super muddy because all the dirt that we have is clay and it rained a bunch. And I was like, this is a muddy. It looks pit. really good. It doesn't Thank even you. look like. It looks like a driveway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I covered it in gravel. I guess so I got some gravel delivered. Well, um, I didn't yeah. see a lot of gravel. It just looked like a, it just looked like a dirt road. Like, so I put gravel. I think I don't know that I've showed you oh, the okay. latest picture. No, which, I saw yeah. it looked like dirt to me, but yeah. it looked like we'll have the latest picture. In it looked the, like a well-formed dirt road. Like, thank you. I mean, that's was the idea. So I mean, you probably saw it, it like that, where it was like the dirt. Yes, that's what I saw. Yeah. So now it is gravel. So yeah, it's like fully gravel. Dang. Like straight up road. That's crazy, man. Yep. That's impressive. So it's done now. Very very happy about that. That's super cool. Yep. No more so anyway, muddy log bridge for you. No more mud. So yeah, enjoying that. And we got our uh, septic tank pumped. Fun. Because it was that time of the, every like Decade. five, five years, where the county tells us like, get your pooper pumped. So we <laughs> sent a, a letter. Crawled. Yeah, which like, I'm proud of myself because it was like last time we had to have it done. You know, it's like they didn't know where it was in the yard and they had to dig up a bunch of stuff and it like took a while to get the grass like back in shape because it's like, it's a, it's a, concrete tank that's underground mm -hmm. filled with poop what's the thing that and, kept on getting yeah. hit whenever we'd have company events at your house and it was in the yard oh that was like a, 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 a telecommunications like oh okay th thing yeah i will say it kept getting hit but it was always at risk of being yeah hit. oh it's just laying on the ground now oh <laughs> it's like a it was like an at&t like phone oh line, like rj45 that, oh like, okay. we didn't even have any you know oh and i'm like i would just cut this thing off and oh, rip I it out was of like ground. your well or something no, important oh no, okay no so our septic tank is like in the backyard so they have to like dig up all the dirt open the hatch to the tank yeah. and then suck out all, all the poop that's yeah. if you live in the country that's how it works we don't have like you know septic treatment or anything they could come and suck up suck it up and then they take it somewhere i don't know where they go probably bring it to a Mars. treatment plant um anyway so yeah we had that done and literally just the timing of it the septic person and the stone delivery person showed up at basically the same time and the guy pumping the septic tank was like parked right where i needed to drop all the stone so for your bridge or your road yep for the yeah. bridge road thing plus i just like to have stone on hand for various projects you know because i no i don't but sure last year i had to spread i spread 66 tons of stone why because we have like uh we have a paved driveway and there's like edging along the driveway oh yes that, it doesn't like, crumble away. yep I so remember like that. you know over time that stuff gets I packed down yep. and, you know so it's like Rather than, you know, because like you pay a delivery fee. Yeah. You know, that's like the same price no matter how much stone you get. And the stone's not that expensive. So it's like I just get a whole 18 tons of stone delivered at a time because that's how much will fit on the dump truck. So, yep. And now, I'm, now I've got like I don't know, a few tons left in the driveway. I got to move it, you know, so I can park in the driveway again. <laughs> but I put it in the driveway because if I put it in the grass, then it's going to kill all the grass and it's going to be a bunch of stone in my grass mm -hmm. so i put it in the driveway and then it's just you know no. where, are you gonna, where are you gonna put it now i move it into their various locations but it's gonna be in it's gonna kill the grass 
No, I've got like woods and just like other areas. I've oh. got like other places where I already have stone that I can like put on top. But like the truck, oh, okay. the truck can't access those places. Gotcha. So okay. like I just, the, it's easy to dump it in the driveway. This is way too much information. Yeah, no I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions. But Sorry. Anyway, but just, it was just funny. And then it turns out like the septic tank guy and the stone guy like knew each other. And so they were like BS and, and whatnot. Yeah. This is when I like wasn't planning on coming into work that day last week. And then. I decided to come into work yep. and that's when all this stuff went down. So I'm like, here I am at work trying to like remote yep. coordinate with Rachel. because Rachel was there <laughs> and she told us, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that all happened. Mr. Stone um, and Mr. Brown. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Brown, that's right. Uh, and then I've been working on my nephew's headboard. Uh, making right. great progress on that, uh, which I'll have pictures to show here, but I can show you real quick. Um, yeah, so that's the headboard thing. Oh, wow. It's like laying down on its back. But you see now what I'm saying when and I'm that's like, walnut, right? That's walnut. Nice. Yeah. So like the really light colored parts, that's called the sapwood. Mm -hmm. That's like like the outer part of the tree. Uh, and so it's very different on walnut. It's a much lighter color. So I don't cut that stuff off. Most of the time they cut it off because well, you good. want it to be uniform. It's personality. I yeah, yeah. Exactly. So having fun putting that together. So I don't have it fully assembled yet, but I've got it all laid out and cut up and all that. So I got to do fun, some final sanding and assemble and then it's, it should be good to go. That is cool. Isn't that neat? You're going to add some lights underneath those uh, shelves? Kind of make No, it I'm not good. doing any of that. <laughs> His parents can do that if they want. <laughs> I've done my part. It's taken me a whole long time. Um, then the last thing I did was a little bit of welding work. So I shortened your mic stand. Yay! Which now that I knew how to do it because you had the same one as I did, it <laughs> took me like a third the time. And it was much easier. And yeah, now it's uh, shorter. So we can see our, fa our faces more. And uh, yeah, I um, did some work on my trailer jack as well. While trailer the, jack. The welding mode. Yeah, so if you have a trailer, you yeah. know the part that you like spin to like lift up the trailer to like, you know, get it off the hitch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're up, you know. And there's and a leg. You're talking about like the well, leg. The leg. That, like, yeah, that's called like the jack. When, when you park it. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so you have the leg so that, you know, you can lift it up off the ball. You drive away and the trailer just stays there because mm -hmm. it's too heavy to like right. lift off. Right. So you have that little jack. So, you know, I bought this trailer a long time ago and like the basically over the years, the even before I got it, but I've done this too, like the, the, that little jack, that leg part, you, you like wind it up so that when you're driving, it's not like scraping on the ground. But every now and then if you're going like up somebody's driveway, that's got a, an incline to it or whatever because of a trailer that like when it kind of bends in the middle like that it can scrape the ground yeah so over time that like leg part has like scraped and mm. bent and all that kind of stuff so you got to get a whole new one so well normally you would have to but oh no. but if you know how to weld if you know how to weld so ah. i like cut off the bent part and i like welded on a new like flat plate so that i don't have to like carry on a separate piece to have it so i just did some work on it and then it's like as i was taking it apart everything was like all like rusty and all that kind of stuff. So I like scraped it. This is how I got my toothbrush all destroyed. <laughs> right. was like cleaning out the grease and then I greased up. So now it's like the ball bearings are all smooth. It's like smooth operating jack and the thing is nice and solid. So it's yeah, like, go yeah. find something to trail now. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of fun doing these little things. That's it's so like cool. The knowledge like compounds. It's like, I would not have sought out how to do that little trailer jack repair thing, but it's it was a, like. I feel like in the time that you've learned to weld, you've applied it more practically than any sort of like wood know-how that has been applied in the last, you know, similar time frame. I mean, I do a lot of wood stuff too, but. but like in, as far yeah. as like general repairs that you now saved money on doing yourself. Like, yeah. You would have had to spend more money on that trailer repair. I mean, to get a new trailer jack itself is like well, I don't know, yeah 200 bucks so probably? already like that that knowledge and that skill has saved you money where the woodworking oh, skill yeah. has been mostly hobby this is the the welding has been pretty practical a skill everybody that i know that knows how to weld says that the welder has like been the thing that's paid itself back the most yeah of like any tool they've ever bought that's cool so yeah having a good old time welding doing my redneck things i'm just slowly realizing that that's what i am Yeehaw. and i think i'm okay with that Anyway, that's what I've got going on. And uh, yeah, I think we've officially not made this such a short pen cast. I like thought it was going thought. to be. Nope. But <laughs> nope. We start talking about. But that's that's it we got for the personal front. And we are nearing the end here. But um, we can do a quick company update. So we don't have a whole lot to talk about on the company front. But we did have a video this week that went out. A Drew video. That's right. The inks that you must try. Right. We must try. We've had a package set of ink samples on the website for a long time mm -hmm. that have been the must try must inks. Try inks. And we recently refreshed that set, mm -hmm. adding some new colors, keeping some existing ones. Yeah. 
and and the thoughtfulness were, that goes into that. Yeah, and we're like, why don't we use this as a video concept? It's already there. It's yeah, already a, have to work. It's yeah. already a product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of ran through why you should try them. So yeah, yeah. that should be that should be out by the time this publishes. There you go. Go check that out. All right. I think this is gonna be about it for this week. I do have some fun facts, so don't go yet. But I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave us some feedback, ask questions and whatnot in the comments. Um, if you are an audio podcast listener, be sure to email us at pencast at gouletpens.com. And if you're not an audio listener, you can't use that email. We're not allowing it. So I'm just kidding. Oh, also, if you want to say something to us via the YouTube community tab, oh. I'm trying to pay a little bit more attention to that. I did mm -hmm. post a little image from last week's pencast. I'm going to try to do that again this week. But if you have any questions and you just want to throw them in a comment, I'm going to take a peek at that. So that is yet another way you can communicate with us, as well as the comments of this video, of course. If you have any questions, I do see all of the comments. So if you want to leave a question there, I will take a gander at it. There you go. You'll take a group of geese at it? Literally, a mm. group of angry geese Fair shall enough. retrieve your question, bring it to me, for duly, duly consideration, dual. Do consideration. Do consideration. Yeah. Do consideration. There you go. All right. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, the fun facts about candy corn. I'm so well. Yeah. I was about to say I'm so excited, but then you said candy corn. Well, like real candy corn, you get excited about it initially, and then it's a big. No, letdown. I don't. I've been excited about it <laughs> enough times. I know now not to be. Well, fair enough. Just fair like enough. strawberry milk. For years, I was like, ooh, strawberry milk, that's good. Oh, yeah, no, it's I'm not. Not a fan. And it just kept not on burning fan. me. Fair enough. Um, so candy corn originally was called chicken feed. Mm, yep. It was around in like the 1880s. It's yep. been around a while. Uh, but the Golitz, Goylitz, I don't know how to pronounce it actually, candy company, now the Jelly Belly the candy company. I, I will say that Jelly um, Belly, I feel, has better brand equity than go Goylitz. Go go <laughs> so they've been producing candy corn the, as we know it since 1898 so it was called chicken feed and it was made kind of you know whatever not as br oh, brandedly 1899 oh so Almost. i thought i had one. you could have no. bought some chicken feed with that coin back if in 1899 in, in england in england well okay <laughs> they might have shipped it internationally i don't know probably not um so anyway 1890 has been around a long time uh, according to the National Confectioners Association, more than 35 million pounds are made annually or roughly 9 billion kernels of candy corn every year are made. So what a treat. Um, also, if you didn't know this, part of the reason it's called candy corn, I mean, it kind of looks like a kernel of corn, but if you stack them so that they're all kind of next to each other in a round, and then you can like layer them up, kind of like if you were to build up a silo, mm -hmm. it will look like... An ear of corn. If you've never seen pictures of this, you should go look at it. It'll blow your mind. And I think you'll like this fact. This this fact that I got, I pulled from a sketchy website called uh, Riot Fest. Never heard of this site. Not an affiliation of any kind. But it says fun facts about candy corn. One hundred percent true facts, and it's it's very not true on some of these. But I pulled my my sources from elsewhere as well. But I thought you'd like this one, Drew. If you plant a kernel of candy corn. It will grow into a giant candy corn stalk that reaches high into the clouds. If you climb all the way to the top, you get diabetes. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, uh, candy corn has a lot of sugar in it. Uh, it's not true. Don't plant candy corn. It does nothing. And then the last fact in this little article here, Drew, you read that. You'll like that. It just says, candy corn is garbage. Yep. Truth. So, I thought that you would... Your values would resonate with yes. The riot I'm, fest in, I'm on in this agreement one. with that one for sure. <laughs> there you 100 percent truth validated. So there you go. Now you know something about candy corn. Oh man, not an official endorsement. I think it's okay. I only like it like this time of year. You only like it because it's there in front of you. Yeah. If something else was there in front of you, you would say the same thing about that. I would. And if it was chocolate, I would not even give this candy corn a second <laughs> thought. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your button. What's your favorite chocolate bar? My favorite chocolate bar, probably Hershey Symphony. Oh, I love her. I love the oh, an aristocrat. Super. No, that's the thing. Hershey Symphony is not that fancy. It's a milkier. So it's more like a Swiss style. The logo chocolate. is cursive, Brian. OK, well, I like that about it, but it's like a buck twenty five for a giant Hershey Symphony bar. And it tastes not at all like a regular Hershey bar. It's so much like milkier I'm and creamier. 
I'm just shocked I'm like, at how me, like, quickly the, you responded to a "What's your favorite question?" Just my, now. Well, on our little thing that we had, we, uh, we we keep, so for all of our team members, we keep their favorite candy on file so that when we want to do like special treats for our team, uh, we can do so. Drew's is Nerd's Rope, and uh, uh, mine is Hershey Symphony. I think I updated mine. Did you? I don't know what it is now. Okay. But anyway, yeah, it was it was Nerd's Rope. Right. But who 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 rewards you with candy? Like, can mm. anybody? Uh, I've been rewarded with candy once or twice. Have, before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just HR director. I'm impressed. That, bar, you know, that? Of all of the questions I've mm-hmm. asked you, what's your favorite blank? This one was the quickest answer you've I mean, ever given. There's no wrong way to chocolate. The only reason it's quick is because I've already put all that thought into it. And oh, had to choose okay. Gotcha. For my little profile thing. Well, yeah. we will be testing Brian here soon. If you were ever curious about what Brian's favorite blue inks are. I have prepped him in advance saying that we will be covering this in a future pen cast. So he's already, already got the gears turning I on that one. I already made my choices. <gasps> you did? I did. Well, stay I think I might tuned. have six or seven inks in there, depending on whether or not you want me to truly stick to I three. do want you to stick three, 100%. Yeah. Well, I can do it. Okay. I got options for Stay myself. tuned. This is, I'm excited about this. It'll I have, happen. It'll I have happen. no idea what these are going to be. Next week. All right. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll catch you on the next one. Right on.